Welcome to another edition of Brews and Cruise. I am your host, Chris Jacobson, and tonight I am here with my guest, Aaron Thurow, and we have a beer that he has requested that is, I would say, I don't know, a staple in Minnesota. I, sure, I would say most people know of uh, Furious. Furious IPA by Surly. It's based out of uh, Minneapolis, yep. and actually I was there. I'm going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. But you requested this one, and this is like, to me, this is the first IPA I've ever had. Okay. I've, yeah, and when I first had it, I'm like, mm, this isn't my. It's style. a tough one to start with. It is, you know, just just because it is darker. It, it is. is stronger, you know. And now everything, everyone kind of uh, goes to like hazy IPAs or. Oh yeah, don't worry, I know. <laughs> but look at the bottom. It says aggressive. If that doesn't speak volumes. <laughs> but so we're gonna crack these. Uh, is this boys, not? Is this not like the most popular surly? I mean, you I, said oh, you were this just is there. definitely the yeah, most popular, okay. surely for sure, dude. Um, crack one of these bad boys open, surely. If you ever want to sponsor me, just letting you know. Right, just throwing that out you. there. Yeah, just throwing it out there. <laughs> Literally throwing it out there. Oh, goodness. Here come the rest of them. We'll have some, we'll have some backups <laughs> here for you. Yep. <laughs> That's why I love the podcast because it's just so raw. Oh yeah. Let me crack mine here. This is a good choice to have. Everyone will know this. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Buddy. Mm. I don't think I've had Furious in a while. I had it recently. <laughs> and it wasn't at a golf tournament that you and me were at. It was actually at a golf tournament that sure. I was at for Leighton Broadcasting. Do you ever feel like um, you go through seasons with drinking? With drinking or like, drinking like, like, certain beers? Yeah, well, just in general, right? So, like, I would say I drink less beer in the wintertime just because you're not outside summertime. It's, it's refreshing. It's like I switch more to, like, a cocktail or an old-fashioned. I've never thought about that, but I'm going to say probably not. <laughs> no? I, I, I'm pretty much if, – if there's an IPA, a good IPA on tap, I'm going to take that over a cocktail. Except, except if it's a really good old-fashioned – Mm -hmm. I don't know if you like old fashions, but that's my go-to. Really? Yep. Go so, <laughs> funny thing is, my mom. I, I've had old fashions while we've been at restaurants and stuff. She goes, "You take after mm -hmm. your grandma. She loved those." And I'm like, "Really? I didn't know that." And maybe it is an acquired taste, but I've since gotten into bourbons, and I don't know if you're into bourbons. Yep. And okay, so we'll discuss that then. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. So I like to have a good bourbon, and I know you can make them many different ways, but. Um, the way I like them is with a good bourbon, and it's got to have some decent bitters in them. Okay. And then it really makes it almost like a, not candy, but it's like a candy. It, it tastes like a dessert to me instead of, mm -hmm. uh, like, you drink this. This is not a dessert. No. Nope. <laughs> I'm not drinking this after nope. my meal nope. by that's, any means. That's, you know, like the reason you have, like, an evening cocktail or a nightcap, right. right? Okay. So now let's go off of that real quick. You drink more cocktails in the winter? Yes, okay, I so would say so. Are you doing old fashions or is it something else? That Generally, it's an old fashioned. Really? Um, it really depends on what people want. I mean, especially for up north spending time with family. It's like I'll make myself just a nice bourbon old fashioned. I like bullet bourbon. Oh, yeah. Other people like uh, there's a there's a distillery up north by our cabin that we like to go to um, that makes uh, black cherry whiskey. So for okay. those who want something a little bit sweeter, do that just instead of bourbon. And it makes it just kind of a different flavor. Okay. So based upon who likes what, because not everyone can, you know, just do just the straight bourbon on ice. Not everyone. It's a little too much. So that's, you know, I'll, I'll mix that in there, too. I'm, I'm the resident bartender at the cabin. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you're the resident bartender for the family. I enjoy it. I find it a good time. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. that, I mean, okay, so a couple things as I was listening to you just talk. Okay, so you like Bullet. Yep. Um, on one of my previous podcasts, I had Alex Garrett. He came in. It was on. He works at the High and Low. Mm -hmm. He came in, in the morning and made old fashions with yep. with bullet bourbon. Mm -hmm. I love it. I like rye bourbons more than I like okay. other bourbons. Can you tell me why? Because I shy away from rye. Okay. Because for me, it's smoother. It doesn't smoother. give you that like that little bitter beer face. I maybe okay. you would call it. Okay. It's a little bit. So I like to drink a lot of my bourbons on the rocks. I'm not I'm usually. Not, I'm not there yet. Okay. I'm not there yet. <laughs> so maybe when you get there, then you're yep. like rye. Because I bet you, if I had a rye compared to a, was it like a single barrel they call them? Yeah. I bet if I had that in an old fashioned, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you the difference. To be honest with you. Right. But if you give them to me straight up or on the rocks, 
I yep. will know the difference for sure. Yep. So I like that. Now, the other question I had is, have you tried, and I think I asked someone, someone on a different podcast, have you tried Bullet's old-fashioned mix? That nope, they, I've no, not you've tried never tried it. that. Okay. I, I don't know. I'm kind of against it, right? There's something about making the old-fashioned is making the old-fashioned. Sure. Right? I, don't, I don't need a ready mix. Okay. So then when you make, make it, how are you making it then? Because I want, I want to hear this. Because you're the sure, resident Pretty bartender. simple. So I'll... Um, I like to use a Yeti cup or if I don't have a tumbler or something, put it in there, put it on ice, put in the shot, shot and a half of uh, bourbon, um, and then put in, depending on how much bitters you like, anywhere from three to five dashes of Angostura, Angostura, how do you say it? You tell me. Bitters. (laughs) Um, I'm not really sure. And then um, depending on either if you have just regular simple syrup that you can buy at the grocery store, or if you want to make it, then you can do uh, brown sugar and water it's just one-to-one ratio mix okay. that and use that as your simple syrup oh okay um, gives it a slightly different flavor but then you just put in a couple of teaspoons of that and then just let it sit over ice then i pull, pour it over a single cube and then garnish it with a little orange Ooh, yes. r- rub it around the rim and then you squeeze the orange just to, just to release the um just the scent of it a bit just to kind of take away the alcohol smell See, now that sounds fantastic right now. That was my only other alternative <laughs> I thought about, so we'll do that on the next podcast. All and, right, and we we'll do, do that. We'll do a little mixing class. We're, we're going to start your baking or your, your um, mixology show. Mixology show. Now, I do remember the last time I had this. It was actually you and me were golfing, <laughs> which was just last week at Cedar Valley. Oh, yeah. I, I shied away from that just because it was... 95 with a heat index <laughs> over 100. It doesn't matter for me. It doesn't matter if we win, though. No, I didn't matter to me if it's 95 or 65. I'm oh, still we, drinking an IPA. Yeah, but that That's, was a rough day. That was a rough day. But we won. We did win. So there's that. Rolled the dice well. <laughs> even though we didn't roll the, even if we didn't, we roll were the playing dice, well. We, I, we, we yeah. were, our team was kind of firing in all cylinders. Six under after nine holes, because that's all it was was nine holes, and that's fine. Yeah. Free golf, free liquor, free food. Mm-hmm. Can't complain. But yeah, we shot six under. It was you, my dad your wife and you and we play <laughs> to be honest with you the first two holes i was hitting like crap we didn't have very many good shots and then all nope. of a sudden after like the third once the third hole hit we were like boom 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 yep. boom yep yep all of a sudden it, we just strung together a couple of birdies yeah and yeah we were rolling yeah and you know i've never played golf with you but mm-hmm. it sounds like you play a lot i do play or quite a bit i try to play a lot you this play more summer, than me this, this, you. this summer has been more than most um, whether it's playing with my dad, um, subbing in a golf league, finally getting a, a, a gin handicap for the first time. So there's a, a lot what? of uh, gin. So the, the USGA gin handicap, a, a golf handicap index number, oh. I believe is what it is. Okay. But it's, it's a subscription you pay for. I think it's like 50 or 60 bucks a year. Okay. But then you can enter in handicapped tournaments. So it's something Chris Thrun and I about, talked about, like, hey, now that we both have handicaps, we can start entering into these, you know, one-off tournaments and, you know, play other golfers who are probably significantly better than us, but because it's handicapped, you know, it levels the playing field. Yeah. And I feel like, I, I don't know if it's just me and the ads that I'm getting targeted towards me or, <laughs> but if, it it's, uh, or if it's becoming more and more a push for people to get <clears throat> handicapped to say, oh, hey, sh- you know, how would you shoot against this pro player if you got 30 shots? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> I remember playing league here in town and yep. Westfield Westfield and it was nine holes. So that I was, a, that was the first time I ever played. And really? then a couple other times it was at bridges, but the first time I ever played in a league was at Westfield. Did you ever feel like some people were sandbagging? So in what way, how, how do you view sandbagging? Cause it goes both ways in golf. So, my, okay. So the way I'm talking about is their handicap was higher than what they really are. And yeah. they're actually, okay. Um, some people think, I could be like that, but I'm a bogey golfer, right? Yeah. So if so I'll I play nine eight, on if nine, I, yeah, right? Nine, nine shots on nine, and there are days where it's like I could par four holes, or I could, you know, go bogey, bogey, double, triple bogey. Yeah. You know, yeah, that, that's, that's the curse of being in a, a handicapper. Right? That so it depends on the day. If someone's gonna be like, oh yeah, it sounds like you played to your handicap, or you were just it was working. Sounds like the curse of just being a golfer. Yep. <laughs> yep. I remember, well, so my handicap at Westfield was three, and I'd play against guys that were sometimes over nine. So certain holes I was giving two shots away. I'm like, holy cow. Yeah. And they're just going little down the middle, little down the middle, and they would get like maybe bogey or so. And I'm like, you're not even close to this. That day that I played at Westfield, I can't recall who I was playing against, but he was like, 
carried a handicap of like one or a two. So I was getting a stroke on every single hole and then two on the hardest hole. Okay. So, and that was the first time I'd ever had that. So I fundamentally played the game differently knowing, okay, just to even have the hole if this guy pars, all I need is a bogey. Yeah. So it drastically changed like how I play because I'm like, okay, I don't need to be aggressive here. Yeah. Right? Bogeys are pars at this point. Yep. So it, it actually me, meant I had, I played right to my handicap. I think I had maybe even one or two pars on the day. So I had a great day. However, my handicap is off of bridges, okay. which is a harder course. Yes, it is for sure. So even though I carry a uh, 17 handicap at bridges, it'd probably be a little bit lower Westfield now than right, I have it in yeah. place. Well, here's the thing though, like you have to play the course and nobody understands that more mm -hmm. than a golfer does. Because if you start playing about, oh, well, all I have to do is get a bogey on this one. All of a sudden you start like mm -hmm. kind of getting lackadaisical and right. you start not being aggressive like you were saying. And then also you're like, oh shoot, I'm just trying to get bogey now and might get a double and lose the hole. So how long have you played golf for? Since I was three, I had a club in my hand. Okay. So all my life, as far as I remember. Is that because of your parents or? Well, my, well I mean, I had a plastic golf set when I was little. Yeah. And then. <laughs> Did your dad golf or your mom oh, yeah. golf? Okay. Uh, both, both grandparents and my dad, they all played. And so that's where I picked it up from. And mm -hmm. I've always had a club in my hand. I remember I had this <laughs> little blue plastic set of giant, just giant ass clubs. And a I know exactly the set you're talking about. Cause I mean, didn't, <laughs> it, also come, it, didn't it also come with like a plastic bag too yes, it on did. two little wheels? It sure yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, I know so what you you're know. talking about. <laughs> Anybody that's out there listening, if you were born somewhere- We're not that far apart in age. It, it was all the same. We're all 90s kids. Right, and that's exactly right. So you probably had one too. And someone else listening probably had one. That's the furthest I know that I had because I had photos of it. But the furthest back I remember playing is like when I was in about fifth grade, I had a pull cart, <laughs> a red and black plastic bag with about 30 or 40 clubs in it that were just family heirlooms from whoever gave me. I think I had a couple five irons, a few three or seven irons, and I just had a whole bunch of things. And then when I got to sixth grade after I started picking up really well, because with that, with that bag, of about 30 clubs i won the county championship when i was 11 and then my parents were like well if you're getting serious about golf let's get you a real set so then in 1999 i got the ping i3s and it was like night and day difference of playing yeah. golf and i had those clubs all the way up until two years ago and i finally upgraded and to be honest with you those clubs I don't think are that much worse than what I have right now currently. Mm -hmm. And so they got me those, and then I won the county championship that year when I was 12, and then the next year after that. But here's the problem I had is I was always trying to balance golf and baseball. Mm -hmm. And I always wished, and I said this before on a previous podcast, I wish in sports or in high school golf would have been the fall sport and then baseball was the spring sport. But here in Winona, it was the same. It was spring for both. And I'm yep. like, because I didn't really care to play football that much. Yep. I mean, I love watching football, don't get me wrong, but playing the sport outside the backyard when it's all organized and you have this, you have the offensive line, the receivers, and I'm like, this isn't that fun. This isn't as fun. So I did get very serious about it, and that's when I remember really playing as it about fifth grade. I really remember it. Sure. But I know I have photos from when I was a little kid swinging clubs and stuff like that and playing with grandpa and grandma and stuff. I feel like the sport's become a lot more accessible now. Yeah. Not sure if that's a COVID thing or if, if it's a result of COVID. Um, but uh, I feel like you take a look at uh, three-year-olds and you see them on social media. They're swinging regular clubs 150 yards. Oh, so I don't yeah. Know no, no more plastic clubs anymore. I don't think so. I mean, now they make such good stuff for like, you can get like a whole set for like 50 bucks for a child. Yep. Just to see if they're any good. Yep. Go to a used golf store like up in Rochester. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you can just get like a whole bundle of like legit nice irons, right? Like yep. Callaway irons, Titleist irons. You know, they might be 10 years old, but you're going to get a whole set for 150 bucks. And that's still a good quality golf club. It doesn't yeah. matter how old it is. And you'll get a bag with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the best thing about that, though, is that I feel boys and girls, mm -hmm. if you play against each other in golf, you have a very good opportunity to be on somewhat of a level playing field. 
What oh, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, what I mean is like, you know, you go to basketball and a guy that's, you know, 6'5 compared to a girl that's even, let's just it's, say 5'10". It's 100% a finesse yes. sport. Yeah. You look, at, you look at the pros and the varying sizes, shapes, all of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Your wife actually proved that just last week when we were playing mm-hmm. because, I mean, granted, she gets go for the women's tee. So, yes, you do get a little bit of an advantage. But, but she's it, all a 5'2". But she's all 5'2". And she's hitting it like at least 200 plus yards down the fairway. Yep. And so that she won does. the long drive. <laughs> she did win the long she, drive. She won the women's long drive. I think I think that one was probably about 220. Yeah. Yeah. But that makes it so much more on a level playing field. It's kind of like a handicap. I also think in a golf way. yards are different than football yards. 220 yards. That's two football fields and yeah. then some. Did it feel like we drove that many? No. I didn't think so either. But you, I, you I and know. I were both approaching 300. You might have had one over also on one of the par fives, but like three football fields. I mean, I've been to a football stadium. That seems insane. But when you're thinking about the stadium compared yeah, to just the field, just the field. and not the end zones, yep. that's what you had to take into consideration because I think each end zone is like seven yards deep. What? Something like I think Ten each, yards. Are they 10 yards? 10 yards. Okay, I thought it was seven. Yeah, so, so 120 anyways, total. 120. So, yeah, you got to take that into consideration. Did we go two football fields for your wife's drive? It's hard to tell because, you know, you have the distance between the fairway and you're trying to – figure it out but you know what i mean the- that, that has been one of the biggest things that has improved my game well once going indoor all winter long going to a simulator to oh, yeah. actually see how far you're hitting the ball and then to take that outside and actually have a range finder changes everything yeah. r threes you know any approach shots like there's no way now i mean I, I could without it but like it's such a massive improvement yep because once you know roughly how far your clubs go, then the game gets way more interesting. Right, yeah. And you've done the indoor? Yes. How'd you like it? I like it. Um, I've done Rochester Indoor Golf. I've done the Golf Garage here in town. Yep. Um, and I've also done X-Golf. Have you heard of that one? I have not. Newer place in Rochester. Um, they're going for more. Uh, they're going to have leagues and stuff, but they have. Um, they claim their own proprietary uh, indoor simulator and whatnot. Okay. But it is by far probably one of the best setups. I mean, you hit it at the screen. The screen's bigger than anyone I've seen. Um, the grass uh, is sloped back towards you, so the ball goes back into a funnel, and it places it on the tee for you. Oh, you know, I've seen that on TikTok. Yes. That's sweet. It's <laughs> extremely high-end. You know, all the buttons are laid out on the floor versus having to go to a screen if you want to mulligan or something. Oh. So it's as simple as just tap the button with your foot or with the golf club and just do it over again but the screens there are huge i mean you're gonna you're gonna pay a premium for it sure but it's okay on a wintry day where you're looking to go and you know on a sunday and watch some football and you know play nine holes of golf i think it's worth it and it's one of the things where you pay for the bay right so if you bring four people you're gonna save money sure do you pay by the hour or by by the well yeah yeah I, i think it's i think it's by the hour okay um i i i honestly couldn't tell you if it's discounted if you're only one or two people sure but I do remember from the few times we did do it, if you did bring like four or six people, I mean, it's going to be the same price Okay. at that point. So they must charge by the hour because yeah. it's like bowling. Yep. If you have six people on lane compared to one, you're just going to get more games and it's all that's going to happen. Yep. Really nice place. So I think they said each simulator was like $20,000. Damn. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Did you feel like it was pretty accurate then? Um, yes. I felt so, – so what they could do with that one, they said they could do uh, – different levels it could either be 100 percent accurate or they could give you like you know kind of like bumpers uh play, really uh, playing bowling right so oh, so okay. if you slice the heck out of it it won't slice it as bad okay if a you little t- more forgiveness yep now <laughs> it won't it won't give you extra yardage but it will give you some forgiveness on the side to side sure there. okay and then how does the putting work on that so the putting was actually kind of nice because because you're putting to that upslope they basically told us that, hey, if you're going to putt it and it's going to hit the screen, it's like you're hitting a, a 30-foot putt. Okay. So they were able to give us those kind of distances. So sure. you can know based upon how far up the hill you want to putt it that what you want to do. But just like any other simulator, it's not perfect. You're not reading the green. So it's like give yourself five or even 10-foot gimmies just, okay. to, just to keep I, the round going. I heard about that. Um, I just met the guy who owns the one here in town. Yep. And he wants to come on the podcast and, yes. and talk about it. I'm like, fantastic let's do that so he was kind of giving me a little idea of like sometimes if you get within 10 feet have you ever played on a simulator i have never 
Okay, yeah. I mean, other than that. getting fitted for a club, that's we're, it. Okay, so now, so we're going to do a mixology class, and we're going to do a field trip to a simulator. A <laughs> field trip? Yeah, just <laughs> just, just so everyone can get, a, can, can get a hot take of your first time hitting into a screen. Yeah, well, I've hit into a screen, but it was getting fitted for clubs, so it was like you're at a driving range, but you're hitting into it. Oh, a, sure. So okay. I've done that, but not actually playing against people. It was just mm -hmm. getting fitted for a driver or irons. It's you'll you'll play better than you do outdoor. Again, that's because we do, you know, just for pace of play, you do five foot gimme. So you put it into a five foot hoop, it's going to add one onto your score. Okay. Um, it's not a bad idea, though. I mean, it's kind of hard to putt indoor unless I had a putting green in front of you to putt, I guess. Right. But like, you're, then that's just it. So you think of your realistic score. Like, what are your odds of making every single five foot putt? Yep. So, okay, now I got a question for you on that. You play in the winter. Mm hmm. Okay. What, when is roughly the last time you usually go out and play? What month? Okay, uh, it depends on the year. Cause um, what's the temperature that you're like? Once it hits that, I'm done. I'm out. We're we're good. Forty five. Forty five. Okay. So then, it, but it's different though, cause forty five feels fundamentally different in March than it does in. <laughs> October. That's absolutely true. So you're freezing in October. Yes. You're like, yeah. oh, this is yeah. nice. I'm taking my shirt off right yep. now. Yep. Yep. So eh, 45, 50, sun's out, not blowing. Yeah. Okay. So then you go in the winter and and do the indoor. Yep. Are you sore because you haven't done it in a while? Then after your round is done, do you feel like, oh man, I can, I can tell I just golfed the other day? Because that's how I feel when I play softball for the first week or two when spring hits. Yeah. Or if I go out and do some batting practice preseason, I'm like everything in just my oblique area is just sore because I haven't done it in no, you know, six months. That, and that, that's a good point to bring up because I did play all. Like I mean, actually we had a pretty mild winter, so I did yeah. play outside pretty much every month. I think with <laughs> the ex near, I, I yes. think with the exception of January, February people were out, so I remember that. In December we had like a we had no snow. Day. Yeah, we, and we had no snow. Yeah. So if you were golfing at 45 degrees in December, yep. Yep. you were playing because I don't think we had snow for Christmas for once. But point being is that even when I, we weren't, I was still going to a simulator. So mm -hmm. I would say, no, there is no like, okay. at least this past year, since this is the first time it's really ramped up for me playing sure. golf this much, um, that no, I mean, you know, I'm pretty much in golf condition. Okay. So you didn't hardly have any breaks. Okay. No, I really haven't. I, I would say this summer I have played every single week. Okay. Yeah. That, that's that's way more than me. Mine's yep. every scramble. So. That, and I'm really kicking myself now for not doing a membership because I probably should have. You probably got your money's worth? I think I think I would have. Okay. Yeah. See, now I look back and I'm like, all these you know, tournaments I'm in, I'm like, it's $100 here, $120, $80, whatever yep. it is. I'm like, man, I just spent a membership there, mm -hmm. and I can't even figure out if I'd be able to get my membership money's worth because i thought about it too and i'm like wait softball's three nights a week now i would never right so i just do the scrambles basically yeah now i was never a softball baseball player but i feel like at least from my perspective you can tell when somebody has a swing coming from softball baseball yeah do you, does it affect you nope is it a myth is it is it you a personal thing it might be mental Mental? I think so, because here's the other thing that always was said. I played baseball and softball at the same time. And they go, oh, that softball swings. And you golf forever, baseball. too. So yeah. is it not just the fact that you have all this knowledge because you've done all of them, so you can very easily yeah. kind of switch between the different motions? To be honest with you, you know what? I always think, you know, when you, we're right-handed golfers. So when the ball's above your feet, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a simple shot because it's like swinging a softball bat or a baseball bat. Worst damn shot I'll ever have is usually on a side hole, side hill slope. Uh, one that's particular in front of me where the ball's above my feet. I'm like, oh, this is just simple baseball swing. You know what? The ball goes every which way other than straight. So sometimes I feel like it could be mental, but it also could be because you asked me the question before, how long have you been golfing? Since I can remember, I've been right. doing that. So right. compartmentalize things. And sometimes it could just be mental. Because mm -hmm. like I was just about to tell you, I always had coaches saying, oh, playing slow pitch softball is going to screw up your baseball swing. And I'm like, never really did. I was still hitting well over 300 all my life, even until I was 26 or 27 playing like amateur baseball. I the only baseball. time I might even remotely listen to that is if I had the opportunity to make a career out of either one of those. Right. You then, know? okay. So if I was Maybe like, I'd take a little more seriously. Absolutely. Because you'd be like, okay, now I want to work on this specifically if I really have a shot at it. Right. But being 
me playing for fun on all of these and I have mm-hmm. to pay to play. I don't see that big of a difference. You played golf with me just, you know, last week. Did I look like I had a baseball swing? I don't think I did. No. no. I mean, I'm just you, you look fairly you, you you look perfectly comfortable over a golf yeah. ball, you know. Yeah, so I I don't I think that I don't think it's a myth. It might be mental. Yeah. It might be a mental state. So now how long have you been playing golf? All your life or something no, you just picked up? No. I mean, um I had probably a summer's worth, maybe two summers worth of lessons as a kid um, growing up. And then proceeded to probably stop throughout most of my childhood and then picked it up again, just about that time you're getting your freedom in middle school and whatnot to go and do your own thing. Um, Ended up trying out for the Cotter golf team when I was a freshman, didn't make it. I couldn't even tell you what I was shooting at the time. I had no idea. Sure. Um, But, and then played periodically throughout high school. So I I really didn't pick it up until probably, um, honestly, um, Shelly, my wife, and then her dad really started picking it up too when when, when he could. So we would go home and almost every week we'd go visit our family up in Eau Claire, uh, we'd be golfing. And this is going back maybe four or five years ago now. Oh, so not that long. No, no. So I really haven't been playing that. And then now, so got fitted last year, got new clubs this past year. So now it's it's pretty constant. I mean, yep. even then when I was saying I was playing with her, I mean, that was maybe two or three times a month. Okay. And now it's, you know, at least once a week. Okay. Is she new to the game too or? What yeah, so that at that time is when she first started. Oh, okay. Yep. She picked up pretty fast and it's only been four years. Yeah, I, she's one of the ones I think she's just a natural athlete. I mean, she's played basketball. Um, she does all the the refereeing and whatnot now. Yep. Um, we played a lot of intramurals in college, so golf was just the one sport she probably hadn't done yet. Sure. So, well, you know, and it's it's fun because you don't have to like you don't have to get ready for it totally. I mean, you play basketball, you gotta like kind of stretch a little bit, especially when you get older. <laughs> but you can't go out and just kind of one leisurely. sport I can't do is basketball. Really. You do not, you, yeah, you don't want to see me try and dribble a basketball. <laughs> I showed the gym one time, I can, watching basketball. I, I can, I can <laughs> shoot hoops. Shoot hoops. I can shoot hoops. I cannot play basketball. <laughs> well, I, you know, and that's the funny thing, though, because when you go to a golf course, you get to, some people don't think it's relaxing. I kind of do. I think it's a sport where, like, oh, I can go have a beer, and I'm going to be okay. I think it's peaceful, um, whether you are for or against music, I mean, it can be as peaceful as you want it to be. Mm-hmm. But to me, nothing is better than Saturday, Sunday morning. You know, I, I personally like a nice like 7.30, 8 a.m. tea time. Really? Coffee on the course. Damn. And it's just quiet. Okay. There's still, there's still dew on the fairways. If it's a nice course, maybe they, they clear it off the greens. But that is, that, that is my idea of like a perfect morning. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, my, my neighbor, uh, he was on the podcast, too, Matt Fitzgerald. Mm-hmm. He said the same thing. And my buddy Brett Hurley said the same thing. He likes to get up at, like, 8 and play, even if it's just 9 holes. And you're done by 10, he says, and then you still have the rest of your day to yourself. And I'm like, man, that, that you know, the difference is, though, I go to the gym at, you know, 5 in the morning, and they probably, you know, everyone else probably thinks, oh, geez, that sucks. Yeah. Do you work on an empty stomach? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like having food in my system. I, I'm the same way. Yeah, so some people might think I'm stupid for going to lift weights at 5 in the morning, and I think playing golf at 8 a.m. sounds not that great because, to me, golf sounds, I guess lifting is just, like, part of my day. Golfing is, like, a treat to me sometimes. So I'm like, if I'm having a treat, I don't want it to be at 8 a.m. I'd rather have it at noon. <laughs> so right. I'm a noon, I'm an afternoon golfer, I guess, right. or a late morning at best. It, it, the thing is, I play my worst golf in the mornings. Absolute worst golf in the mornings, right? Well, in the afternoon, it's like it'll be out there. I'm like, okay, how many holes can I get through before I need to crack open that beer because <laughs> of too many shank shots? Okay, so how many holes is it then? Um, it's usually I'm, like second hole where it's like, all right, all right. <laughs> First hole did not go well. That's funny. Yep. Hold on. Yep. <laughs> so then what's your breakfast beer or drink? Oh, no, we don't. I, I won't do that in the morning. Okay. Um. I thought you just said you wanted a, you had a beer at whenever. That, that's what I'm saying. So that's why I don't play well in the mornings. No. Oh. Because I don't have the breakfast beer. Oh, gotcha. Sorry, I thought you said I crack one no, open. No, but it's got to just, just got to suffer through. Sure. No, I mean I I don't know. I mean, 
I guess you could. I mean, like if you're like on a golf trip with the guys or something, sure, I mean, yeah. it's totally different, right? With what, um, when you're on the golf course, what's your drink of choice? Um, I don't think you're getting old fashions out there. No, no, it's, it'll <laughs> it'll just be a beer. Um, yeah. Ideally, light beer of choice. That was the only other one I was going to consider for today. Uh, Kona Big Wave. That's my light beer. Okay, a lot of people like that. Yep, yep. So that's that's pretty much one. Um, I appreciate if you I, if suggesting I, this. Yeah, yeah. No, so otherwise, uh, depending on where you're at, I'll just try the local IPA, whatever it might be. Yes. I like trying something that's around the area. If they have something that says, hey, it's local from here, mm -hmm. I'm like, cool, give that to me because I can, you know, get certain things any other place. Yep, yep. Or um, if I want something, you know, a little bit different, maybe just a blue moon. Oh, yep. That's but then again, I do play a lot of Wisconsin, so Spotted Cow. Yeah. That was the other thing I thought about. Has anyone done Spotted Cow in here Not yet? yet? Oh, no. I should have done Spotted Cow. Too. The only closest that we got to this was, I think, maybe on a sampler pack with someone. We had okay. this, but it wasn't full this. And I like Furious, don't get me wrong. So Well, I, I had no idea that you liked Furious as much, so it kind of worked out. I like... I, the whole thing... So with the podcast, what I love is when someone tells me they like something, because I'm like, tell me what you want. Some people say... You choose. And I'm like, okay, I hope this is what they like, but I want my guests to tell me what they want because mm -hmm. I love sampling things that I may not even have heard of for oh, the most that, part. That's, that's such a bummer. So um, uh, my family, we did, we did a little family vacation um, out in South Carolina, and we had all these IPAs left over, and I just had finished them. The, the trip was back in June, so I was sure. really savoring those. Had I had those, I would have brought the last two for you to try with them. Well, oh, uh, I couldn't even tell you what it's called. I think I, I think I took a picture. So it was in what South Carolina, you said? Yep. And you were there on a family vacation. Yep. Was it the one that you told me that you went and golf at like this amazing course? Yep. What yes. was that course called? Harbor Town. Harbor Town. Yeah. And you had a whole bunch of gear on last Monday. And I was like, is this a brand we'll that I've it. never heard of? Wicked Weed Brewing Coastal Love hazy ipa i took a picture of it because i'm like i oh, have to get this shit. let me look at this one yeah. that looks sweet yeah it's uh and that's the other thing i don't know what it is but like ipas they always like some of them come out with just like the coolest looking cans for those who are watching on youtube there's the picture i don't know if it'll actually focus because the camera's bright but it is called wicked weed brewing coastal love I, I, the can is pretty cool yeah yeah so that was um I think we got it like two days left of their trip. Just ended up, you know, either going out to dinner or something. So we just ended up drinking all of it. And I'm like, no, I'm, br I'm bringing this home with me. This is fantastic. Yeah. So I've been savoring it, but I just finished it this past week. So did, did you drive out there or fly? We drove. Okay. So you could bring it home then with you. Yep. 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 So we drove. Um, yes. Had that, that was the only time opportunity I've had to play a PGA course. Um, it's Harbor Town Golf Links um, in Hilton Head Island. And it is... Um, uh, it's always played the weekend after the Masters. Okay. So generally speaking, I would say at least people who follow the somewhat the golf community, or at least most people know what the Masters is. If you continue up with oh, golf yeah. after that, then that would be the tournament if you decided like you were still into it to watch the next weekend. But um, we got to play there. Um, it was punched two weeks prior, so it wasn't in like – perfect condition but it almost kind of played favorably to a newer golfer because the greens were rolling slower and meaning punched as oh punched as in you know they, they were aerating the green perfect Sorry. i just want the viewers yeah to know so that. They, they aerated the green you know it looks like there's a bunch of little um you know logs of just dirt out there yep. um but it's a nice course so that is already all filled in with sand you could still kind of see it, it looked kind of like ripley yep um so that was uh that was okay i mean basically you were gonna two putt it was really tough to one putt okay yeah so it's two putt pretty much automatic unless you were yeah. like right next to yeah. it and um tough course like i think they said on the first fairway uh that while the landing zone was nice and wide open you had to hit it through a 20 yard wide corridor okay to get it there so it was an intimidating shot. So do you mean like, okay, you're teeing off and there's the, like the 20 over, yards of trees? Overhanging trees, yes. yes. okay. Yep. That is intimidating. And it's a mental thing, damn it. It's just like the swing you're talking and there, about. And there, was, and there was an added mental aspect to it because we had what was called a four caddy. So a forward caddy. So it's not like they were carrying your bag for you, but they're there to make sure you have a good experience. They go down range, so they watch where your ball lands, oh, which is super nice, nice because I was playing with my dad and my brother-in-law who, um, you know, between the three of us, we probably 
not going to hit every fairway, being honest. No, yeah. So, and I swear, they have eyes like a hawk. They are just used to it. Really? Yep. Oh, gosh, I'm trying to remember what our caddy's name was because he went by a nickname. It, it'll come to me. But super nice guy, was a collegiate golfer, I want to say, somewhere down in, in Georgia or Alabama. Um, just living his best life out there. I mean, it was like 90, 95 <laughs> degrees we were playing. He was barely sweating, but in his words, he's like, we don't sweat in the south, we glisten. That's probably true. Their bodies are used to it. But he made sure we had a really fun time. And I think the most um, uh, exciting part, honestly, for me, other than just like walking the course and hearing the few things he had to say was every time he pointed out where the PGA um, uh, tee boxes were. So how far back they were playing. Because there's this one where I think it was hole two, actually, where you get off of the hole, you have to go across um, a road, and then you can see the tee boxes up there. He's like, oh, by the way, way off here back to the left is where they tee off if you go oh, look for their placard. Like another 100 yards back on a par five. Wow. So it's just to put into perspective where they – I went and stood by it and just looked down there. I'm like, that's just – it just shows you the perspective as to how far apart we are from some of these professional golfers. So I have a lot of questions about that course. Okay, yep. for one, is that the best course you've ever played at? Yes. Okay. F two, how much does it cost to play around? It was punched, so it was cheaper. Okay. Uh, I want to say it was like 275 For 18 Yes. Does that include cool. the caddy? So it says a recommended caddy tip per person of $50 a person. Okay, and then so you can expect that that caddy's making at least two hundred dollars a tip per round if you have four golfers. So you tip them too. Yes. Okay, so, that was my next so question. So let's actually. say in reality, you know, three twenty-five to three fifty around. Yep. It's probably I think you know under normal nice perfect conditions five hundred around. Oh wow, that's. Uh, they have three courses there. That's the most expensive one because that's the PGA course. Sure. Uh, but then they also have Atlantic Dunes, which is the original course on the island, and that one goes out to the actual Atlantic Ocean. This one's in the harbor, so it's in between Hilton Head Island and the coast of um, South Carolina and Georgia. Okay. And then Heron Point, which is one of their newer courses, and I honestly don't have enough information about it. Okay. But what's super nice about this, uh, compared to a number of other PGA courses, it is completely public access. This isn't a private course. Okay. Um, but what was super cool about it was once you're done, you get to go to the locker room. Oh, like where the PGA guys? Correct. Oh, nice. You know, and the only way you can go there is after playing around a round of golf. You need your scorecard to come in there. And they have kind of a full menu. Uh, you can get, I think they say, like, the, your, your first beer is a dollar. Um, so just kind of a little. Really? Little, little gimmick. Yeah, right. Yeah, wow. pay, you pay three fifty around, but your first beer is a dollar. Perfect. Afterwards. Um, and, yes, you can see the lockers in there, which do have all the gold-plated names. I mean, you see Tony Finau, Ricky Fowler, um, uh, Scheffler, all of these guys. So wow. it's just like. That's really cool. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, no, the one thing that kind of really set into me is to, like, when you're actually playing on the course, and it was on the 18th hole. I had a great drive. I was super pumped about it because all I want to do is it's you, there's this big lighthouse in the background. It's a picturesque hole. Um, hit the fairway. Second shot, I landed in the green side bunker. And the, and the caddy looks at me. He's like, hey, Matt, Matt Kuchar got up and down from there. You can do it, too. Oh, yeah, and, and you're just like perfect. Well, one, I can't because I'm not a pro, but two, <laughs> to realize you're in the same position they were. I don't think you can say that about any other sport. That's pretty cool. You're not going to say that about football, right? You know, <clears throat> you are not probably going to be on a football field. No, was it fourth and one? All you got to do is run the ball, right? Yeah. Nope. That's not, that's not what the Seahawks did. <laughs> that's right. Yes, that's right. They passed it for some reason. Right. No, that that's I, I can't say. Though. I can't say I ever came back from twenty-eight to three, losing to the um, Atlanta Falcons. No, but you can say you're at the same spot as a pro was because mm -hmm. he was in that same exact spot. Yep. You so, know, and I, I think that's just what's really kind of neat about the sport because I think, and I've said this before um, to other friends and whatnot, but at any given moment we can hit a tour-worthy shot. Yes. That's right. And you could probably even outdrive some of the guys, possibly. Mm -hmm. That You know, that's the best thing I love about golf is even when you're practicing, you still have to play the game. So you're going to play a round of golf to practice. Yep. I mean, granted, you can go to the driving range, hit driver, whatever. Yep. You can go to the uh, putting green, putt, chip. You know, you can do all that. But in order to actually 
get scores. You have to go and do exactly as you would do if you were playing someone or playing competitively. You still have to go play the course. Right. That is the fun part about golf. That's why I always loved it because, for one, that reason. For two, you can't blame anybody else but yourself. Yep. And that's just it, right? <laughs> you can look at competing scores with you know your buddies and whatnot, but at the end of the day, it's you versus yourself. It really is. That's, and your mental state. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, in the, at the end of the day, I'm just – Especially now I have a handicap, right? I'm, I'm just playing myself to lower my handicap. Yep. Uh, well, they exactly. Try to improve it. Because yep. some people are like, well, don't try to improve it because obviously they want to sandbag and try mm -hmm. to get the highest one they possibly can get away with, right. whatever that means. And then you can go beat people by right. getting a stroke or whatever. Now, my next question after that was, did you use carts or did you have to walk? We had carts. Okay. So yep. we do have carts then. Yep. That was kind of a, that was kind of a thing, you know, making sure, you know, make sure it was accessible for my dad and whatnot and um, the biggest thing they do out there is, you know, pace of play, too, just to keep things moving. Yep, sure. But I do know other courses, like uh, if you were to go play um, Whistling Straits over in Wisconsin, it's like that. that's a true caddy, right? So you're going to have uh, <laughs> a caddy carrying your bag. You're going to walk the course. Um, another thing I understand about that, too, uh, is that you better make sure you don't have, like, 20 golf balls in that bag because your caddy is not going to like that. <laughs> <laughs> what if you lose them all, though? Then what? You're right. Caddy they're, runs they're, and gets you more? They might have to. Yeah. But that's just it, right? They don't want to be carrying around a 40-pound bag. Well, if you tip them right, they don't care. I mean, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. So then did your caddy ride in the cart with you? And then there, there was a few times where he'd, like, hop on the back. Sure. And then he goes and walks out where your drive might be and watch for it? Right. So, like, on the par threes, he was there on the tee box with us. But, okay. like, on the first hole, it's, like, not only was I'm, like, massive clubhouse over here, you know, other people in the start are just waiting. But I got my caddy down here. Hopefully, I just don't, you know, shank it 20 feet into the water right here <laughs> or, you know, 150 yards into the driving range right over here. Um, but, yeah, so and it's nice because then he, he gives hand signals. So if, if he puts his hands up like it's uh, the field goal is good, I mean, you're in the fairway. Sure. Um, if he puts his hands out like it's no good, um, then it's, uh, you know, then you know you're in the rough. Yeah, okay. um, and then if he puts two hands to one side or the other, that means you're out of bounds. Oh, really? So there's hand signals? Yeah. That's yep. cool. And then also there's one more, like it's a down kind of signal if, like, you're in a bunker or something or in some sort of a – a hazard um, yeah oh um, that's really cool to know right so you know if if he's giving you the signals where two hands are going to one direction it's like okay well i'll re-tee or drop up there sure yeah but no it's very nice the most the the closest one i've played at professional wise was um spirit hollow i believe it was what is called in burlington iowa and i think they had a couple years for the it was the qualifying rounds to get to the u.s open and mm -hmm. like 99 and 2005 or six or something like that then i remember that but we got used carts we didn't have any caddies as far as i remember but it was it was night and day difference in a public right. course that we're used to like when you're in the rough you are in the rough and not only are you in the rough there's also the first cut the second cut and like a oh, third yeah. cut and when you get stuck in those you better club up at least two or three clubs yep. or you're not going to hit it right yep um but the greens were all so true. The one, so the one thing different. that was interesting to me is this is the first time, and the caddy pointed out to be compared to what we're used to playing on here, it was on what's called bent grass. Um, which Bermuda wrote, bent grass? Maybe. Yeah, probably. That's either, probably way, what, yeah. either way, what he was saying was the fact that um, rather than growing up like normal, like our grass does here, yep. it grows like spaghetti. Sure. So that, you know, it doesn't get real grainy for putts, but if you're anywhere on the fringe where you're trying to hit a really nice finesse shot, it's just going to grab your club. Oh, really? Okay. So he's like, it definitely, because there was a number of times where I would just absolutely, you know, duff a, 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 a little chip shot that I wanted to go 10, 15 feet, and it went two feet. Right, Because yep. it just, my club just went right to the ground, and the grass just grabbed it. So that was the first time I feel like I'd really noticed the impact of, like, well, different grass is different grass but, sure you know. well you know and that's what people got to realize if if you're a golfer out there listening to this go play at like a professional or at least a course that's had some professional rounds on it and you'll see the night and day difference of your public local course compared to that i have found myself now having played a number of courses i've actually finally started collecting golf balls for all these courses i played on which i'm really glad i did because i have more than i thought i did yeah um I, i'd like to i don't know maybe 
10 or 15 different courses. I'm okay. Like, that seems like a lot, honestly. To me. Uh, it's more than me because uh, I don't really get out that often. <laughs> but now they have, they, have, they have, you know, courses that are named now, like, oh, the, the, the Gary Player course or a course designed by, um, oh, gosh, I'm trying to remember who designed that course down there or, or an all, or Arnold Palmer course. So it's like I find myself looking for those courses that have names associated with them. Sure. Because, well, one, you know, if you're going to attach your name to a course, you expect to have a certain level of... Uh, of Prestige, you know. at least. Right, right. Yeah. And then also, oh, Pete Dye, that's the one. Okay. Pete Dye does a lot of courses. He did... Um, he, his crown jewel uh, is called the, the Harbor Town, where we play. There's a whole room dedicated to it. But he also did um, TPC Sawgrass in Florida, okay. which has a pretty iconic 17th hole, almost an island green for a par three. Um, where if it comes up any short, it's going to roll off the front into the boardwalk and into the water. So you hit and the green. I, you got to hit the green. Got to hit the green. You got to hit the green. You got to hit it up high enough. Um, I know he has one in Indiana um, called French Lick that's extremely <laughs> popular. And like great you, name. You know, well, yeah, yeah. Great but at the name. same time, at the same time, uh, you know, Indiana, right? Well, what does Indiana look like? I mean, we know they have uh, the uh, was it Great Dunes National Park. You tell me. I have never been to Indiana. Well, I guess I have I've been. I've driven through Indiana, the farmlands parts of it. Sure. So that's my perspective. Yeah. Um, but, sorry, I got distracted here. Does anyone else comment the fact that Elvis is staring at them during the podcast? No. You're no. the first. No. Doesn't well, it feel good to have a celebrity looking there, at you? There is Elvis staring right over here, just by the way. He's actually curling his lip at you. Yeah, he is. He uh, is. But, no, He's I mean, celebrities come here and watch all the time. It's, I figured. It's crazy. I figured. <laughs> uh, you know, so... I just want to say it here that I was on the podcast before Joe Rogan. So yeah, when that happens. That's, <laughs> that's right. Come on, Joe. You can come and hang out too anytime you want, man. But um, to get back on track, I find myself looking for those nicer courses now because like, I want to see, like, okay, so what, is, what does this mean if there's other courses designed by this one person? Mm-hmm. I, I'm just intrigued by it. To see all the other ones they've designed? Yeah. Well, yeah, The have you golfed the Jewel here? I assume you yes. may. Okay, I've never, but the Hale Irwin is the one that's We go supposed- up there once a year kind of as a treat. Really? Okay. And I need to go there. My neighbor is he's like, we're going to go there this fall. And I'm like, perfect, because I want to go. And he's coming back on the podcast in like October at some point. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, you should come sometime. And I'd be like, I said, that would be fantastic. I've only heard great things about it since it opened in like the late 90s and Hale Irwin was the one that designed the course I think okay and so that's when I, when you were going on that track of oh I want to see ones that people have designed I thought you were going to talk about that one the jewel no no I have I, but like I, I do uh, I guess I haven't maybe just done my research on it yet but I am interested in it um have you heard of uh, what Sand Valley and over in um Wisconsin at all? I have not, no. It's a newer cor- uh, newer place, but they have a, 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 evidently a gorgeous golf course. It's not too far from us here, maybe a couple hours. Oh, well, I but, need to get out more for the golf aspect right. of things, yes. Do you, so when you play golf, is it pretty much locally? Is it just limited to like those, the tournaments we have around here? Pretty much, unless yeah. someone says, hey, do you want to go? And I have nothing scheduled that weekend. I'll usually always go if I'm available right. for sure. I mean, when it comes to like the spring and the fall, if it's a nice day out, I'm usually on a motorcycle ride. I mean, True. just to be honest True. with you, I'm on a motorcycle ride. I love doing that. But if someone you ever says, go hey, to any of those um, motorcycle rallies or anything like that? <laughs> Funny you should ask. Uh, I'm going to Sturgis next year. You are? Yes. Okay. That's First all time. Book. First time ever. Yep. Uh, I'm going with. My brother-in-law, Mark, who was on the podcast, Brett, who was on the podcast, Justin, who was on the podcast, yep. Corey Sveen, who has not been on the podcast yet, and he, just, he calls it Jabber Jabber Podcast. Why? Because he's never listened to a damn thing. No? He thinks it's just talk, talk, so, talk, which so it is. Are, so are we calling him out right now for just not, yeah. he's being too afraid to come on the podcast? I think that's what it is. I mean, uh, my buddy Brett said it'd be like talking to a brick wall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Talking to a brick wall is, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, try, we got it, try some it before, yeah. Fake brick yeah, There's a brick wall over here. We'll yeah. call it Corey. Corey's wall. <laughs> so it's not even a real brick wall. It's a fake brick wall. <laughs> it's a fake brick wall. Yes, it is. I don't think it's real. So, I mean, so I, I'm, at, I'm at the point now where it's like, 
You need another one. I do. They're all. I didn't, well, but, I, we, but I didn't know where you were at. So we only I, have his, ten his more. Is all, his, his is all. We only have ten more. So it's not. It's not just me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hide this one. So yeah, you know, going back off that, yeah, I am going to Sturgis next year. Have you ever gone up to? Do you ever go up to like Northern Wisconsin at all? For never. The, the, so there's a motorcycle right up there that my in-laws do up in Tomahawk, Someone? Wisconsin. Oh, you were just telling me about that last week. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. I was gonna say. I just that's about coming this. up. Not this weekend, but the following. The following, and I know I'm busy because I'm going to Nebraska with Jabber Jabber buddy Corey. There is a really <laughs> neat. There is a really neat venue up there that a lot of the stuff. So it's either in the town of Tomahawk, um, and obviously there's you know a lot of bar hopping and whatnot. Involved. Of course. Um, but there's a really neat venue um, if you just go north of Wausau up there, and it's called Bonnie and Clyde's okay. Gangster Park. Gangster Park? Gangster Park. Sweet. It's 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 exactly this ambiance. Really? It is. It's they have a bunch of different stage setups. Um they do, you know, they do the 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 tire um popping contest or what, what do you call Oh, where they like uh well smoke contest where uh, they spin the wheels until they pop or burnout, something. Burnout, yeah, burnout. Burnout contest. contest, yeah. Yep. So they do all sorts of that. I mean, you know, it's all rock and roll music, but um, evidently, a lot of people who like going to Sturgis, who want something a little more local, I mean, they, they seem to enjoy that. I, if I wasn't going, if I wasn't going to the Nebraska versus University of Northern Iowa game that weekend, I would mm-hmm. probably definitely ask my brother-in-law to go up there because he'd so, be game for Just it. add it to your bucket list of like when you have time to do it. It was at up some in point. Tomahawk, huh? Yeah. I feel like you know that day that you told me about that. I think I looked up that night. And probably I, a good uh, three hours from here. I know, big deal. 315 maybe surge is almost 12 so we're good <laughs> so how, how are you doing that right are you loading everything up in a trailer so no we are not that's you a good riding? question people ask me we are riding so the plan is this Corey's coming and he's gonna take his as of now he says he's taking his dad's soft tail motorcycle and he's gonna trailer it i feel like he's gonna buy something before then that's just me but otherwise, so I I like motorcycles. I like cars. I don't know nearly as much as them as about you, I, Chris. Some of these other guys. Yeah. What's a soft tail? It's just a style of Harley. Okay. Um, I don't. Is it know, the kind of thing where it's like if I just googled it, I'd think, probably I'd probably picture it. Oh yeah. Okay. It looks just okay. like one of the bikes that you walked in and saw. You wouldn't probably know the difference. Okay. I, I think it has to do with the suspension as far as I know. I think it's just like a softer suspension in the rear right. is all it is. I don't know because I don't have one. I have a street glide. But the plan is that we're going to leave on August 6th. is a Wednesday. And we're going to stay overnight about halfway. And it'll be about Huron, South Dakota. Because we're going to take highway. So the middle of nowhere. It's a very it's a town of thirteen thousand. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Funny thing is, I was looking up today, and it's like the fifth or sixth largest town in South Dakota with thirteen thousand people. So it's, it's that just tells you about South Dakota how small it really is. Yep. yep. But anyways, we're, we're gonna go there and we're gonna stop, and that's about the halfway point. So it says we're gonna take Highway fourteen out, and that mm-hmm. gets us like sixty sixty five miles an hour on average. When you get out to South Dakota, I don't know if you, you don't want to do eighty. You don't not want to do eighty-five with the crosswinds. No way. I've seen. Um, Have I've you seen gone? Whole, you driven out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you know. yeah, no. So I've driven out to Wyoming before. Yep, that's where we go that way. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I've seen the I've seen the horror videos of like the semis. They were like sideways yeah. or angled over. It's that's just, just see. Okay, so now here's the other fun part about that. To take Highway 14 from Winona compared to I-90 the whole entire way there, it's about an hour difference is all it is. So I'm like, we're going to take the more fun route or the more relaxing route, and we'll just get our way there. So I said, we'll do a halfway point. Huron, South Dakota seems like it's about the halfway point. And then after that, it's like five hours to get to where we're going. I go, we don't want to do it all in one day. Nobody wants to do that. You'd be just miserable, I hear, because it's... 12 hours on a bike and that's if you so, don't stop and that's just it right so uh, what what is normal then i mean if so if i'm in a car um it's be my wife i mean we'll go two and a half to four hours depending on the road trip are you driving a, are you driving a land rover <laughs> no not 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 that time no <laughs> no i'm no. saying if you drive something like that yeah you can go for hours until you have to go to the bathroom for me on a motorcycle i'm like that's one. that's what I'm saying though, right? So like, how how often are you stopping on motorcycle rides? Because I mean, uh, blame my ineptitude, but I've never really been on a motorcycle. So. so for me, I am I'm not one that's like let's just go as far as we can until we can't ride anymore. I'm the kind of guy that's like let's go for about an hour, stop for 15ish minutes, 
and let's go another hour, stop for 15-ish minutes, take your time and enjoy it rather than muscling through it. Do you have cruise control? I do. Okay. It's, that's pretty nice, actually. Yeah. Um, but last year, I did a trip with my buddy Justin. We left from Milwaukee. His turnoff point to go back down to Iowa was about three f- hours and 15 minutes away from Winona. So he went one way and I kept going. I did three hours and 15 minutes nonstop. And I was, when I got home, like, oh, that kind of sucked. But if I had taken like an hour. What hurts first? Is it like the back? Is it the shoulders? It's the lower back. Yeah. For me. For me, it's the lower back. It's just like you're trying to sit upright. Now, they do make little pads and the, like they make little backrests for the midsection portion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I go out to Sturgis, I'm already planning on bungeeing a like a backpack that comes with a motorcycle. So that'll be kind of my backrest. Mm-hmm. So I won't feel it as much. But I'm the kind of guy that's like, let's go an hour, stop at a gas station, just go to the bathroom, talk, let's go again. Just gets the blood flowing through your body. I mean, you're always when you're on a motorcycle, you're always, you know, you're focused. Yeah. But it eventually gets a little long. But when I'm on mine, I have <laughs> speakers so I can have podcasts going. I can have music going. I can do all that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit better for me. But if I had nothing and I was just going, I'd be like, oh, man, this is rough. Because when I drive a car, I'm like, this is tiring. This is boring. Oh, yeah. I get, like, I get sleepy. But so the plan is to go halfway, and then the next day we'll go halfway. Mm-hmm. And then at least we have buffer times if there's, like, bad weather. I was going to say, what about rain? That's Exactly. And I had my, one of my buddies like, Let's just go all the way. I'm like, even if we left at 6 in the morning and we just rode without ever getting off 12 hours later, we get there at 6 at night. I go, now what happens if we got to go to the bathroom? Because we're going to have to go to the bathroom. Would you do 65 in the rain? I wouldn't even really ride in the rain. No, no, no. I would just pull off and wait it out, wait it out at a gas station. I have ridden in the rain, and it hurts. <laughs> well, yeah, hurts. yeah, yeah. The things you don't think about, right? Everyone's like, oh, the safety of it all. But yeah. Like, no. No, it actually hurts. Rain's painful. <laughs> Unless you got, like, a leather jacket on and a helmet on and full face, it hurts. Yeah. I drove from, just to give you a case in point, my my buddy Justin and I, we went to Buffalo City one day, and we were going to go further, and we saw the rain coming. We're like, oh, crap. Let's just turn around, come back home, park the bikes. When we got to the bridge coming over the river, it started raining, and it hurt, like, just, like, someone was throwing nails at you. It was all it felt oh, yeah, like. I'm yeah. like, this sucks. I think I probably experienced it on a jet ski on the river. Yes, that's the only other way I could say that you would feel is on a jet ski on the river if it started raining on you, and it's like, oh, this is kind of painful. Yep. So I'm always like, hey, you know what? And I'm not sure if you're in full leather or whatnot, but I, I'm, on a jet ski, I'm not in full leather either. Right on the skin, it doesn't feel good. I am usually in jeans, short sleeve, and my 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 leather vest, and that's Helmet, about right? it. No. I will get one for I will get one for Sturgis though. Wear a helmet. Your wife says you have to wear a helmet. Right? She wants me to. The funny thing go. is, she found these helmets that look like backwards hats. So I'm hmm. going to get one of those for Sturgis for sure. Will she go or is this a guy's trip? It's or? a guy's trip. Gotcha. I'll put that closer to you. There you go. So it not that yeah, there you go. You're good. If you want to talk all sexy like Mary White. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, she's not. Uh, we made this a guy strip. She was thinking about her and my sister-in-law. I was going to say, you know how this works, right? So where's she going? Uh, she's already gone to Florida with her friends before. Fair. I go, Fair. and she goes, well, it's, it's, I don't get a girl strip. I go, wait a second. Back in like 2018, you went with you and your two friends. 2018. To, to, well, I haven't gone on a guy strip except okay. for my bachelor party. And that was just golfing, really. Speaking of, sounds perfect. <laughs> it was actually very awesome. It was a golf course just north of the Wisconsin Dells, is what it was, and they had some holes. Trapper's that, Turn, or uh, no, it wasn't Trapper's Turn. That would have been like by the Dells, I think, right? Yeah. I have a glass from there. No, it was north of it, like thirty miles. Okay. And the, and some of their holes were replicated after certain. Oh holes. yes. Um. And I think one of them was that 17 hole that you were talking about. It is. It, 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 it absolutely is. Because uh, we tried going there not too long ago on, it was like the first gorgeous day we had, like a 70 degree Saturday, but sure. it was booked. Oh, what's it called? Well, as you're thinking about it, what I had to do on one of the holes, and I think it was that hole that was replicated after that. If not, it was very similar. Like if No, it is. It, it absolutely green. is. Okay. So, sawgrass 17. So it was hit the green, like pay $100, and if hit the green, you get double your money. If you don't hit the green, you get half your money back. I hit the green, and I got $200 to the clubhouse, which got me a bunch of gear, really. And I have the damn, I have the stuff at home. I can't remember. It's got a little triangle flag on it. Um, I can't remember. 
And I know I'm going to get scolded because most of the guys that listened to this were there that day. <laughs> yeah. But it was so much fun. We had such a good time. Um, and one of my buddies got a hole in one that day. No. Yes, he did. I, hole I number would like- three got a hole in one. And I go, bullshit. He did not get a hole in one. And all of a sudden, about a hole later, car girl comes back and goes, what do you guys want for drinks? The guy got a hole in one in front of me. He's buying. I'm like, he really did. So we got our drinks. Next hole I go up, I go to my buddy Jay. I go, did you really get a hole in one? He goes, yep, it's my second one. I'm like, second one in your life? Have you ever had one? one? Nope. Neither, me neither. I've been about six inches away when I was about 15 or 16 at Cedar Valley hole number 15. The little par three off the top. I, I dropped it. It was a kind of a drizzly day that day. At least it had rain. Stuck about six inches away. And I was like, oh, right. damn it. Um, and I was with guys, too. Hole number eight. At Cedar Valley there. Yep. Yep. The one that um, Chris threw and absolutely missed the green and we all beat him on. Oh, yeah. The one where he just chunked it over by the crick a little bit. Right. And then he had to hit a second shot, which was really good. It that was. Shelly still beat him on. Oh, yeah. About, about that. Um, but <laughs> no. So that one, it was for a golf tournament, too. I'm not sure what it was for, but it was for one where like it actually mattered. Like it would have been for a vacation. I hit the flagstick coming down. Some, no somehow stayed within like three feet. Wow. She, she said, just, just write it in that like you were the closest. I didn't, I didn't get the vacation because they didn't make the hole in one. Uh, I think I got a hat for being the closest to the pin, but All the way from that's, the, hat that's to the closest vacation. I've been. And I can't say I've been any closer since. And I can't say I've been any closer since that one. I told you about when I was like 14 or 15 years old. Yep. But, and I don't golf enough to probably get one, but it would be nice if it was for a vacation or for a car or for something. Well, it's funny that we bring that up because I actually am going on a small um, golf weekend because uh, somebody got the closest to the pin. We had the opportunity, um, Shelly, for my birthday, my 29th birthday, so this is uh, over a year ago now. Um, Oh, you're in the 30 Club, huh? I'm in the 30 Club now. All as right, of last welcome. Month, er, welcome. Last, oh, Jesus, September now, isn't it? As of July, I'm in the 30 Club. When was your birthday? July what? 27th. Ah, my wife's the 29th. But, um, oh, I feel like we've discussed this before. We possibly did. Yeah, but uh, she got a, a, there was a golf tournament. Do you watch much for any YouTube golfers? Bob does sports. Oh, I've heard of... Is that where he, like, makes fun of people golfing, or...? No. No, okay, though, that might be the John Boy or whatever it is. Yeah, Bob does sports, um, FP, Fat Perez. Fat... Joey, I've heard Joey, of that name, Joey Cold Cuts. Oh, Fat, Joey Cold Cuts. Fat I Perez, have Fat Perez okay. which is what he goes by, um, he is, like, the good golfer of the group. Okay. Like, he played, um, because the PGA just had that Creator Cup okay. not too long ago, but... Um, she surprised me with um, tickets to play one of their 27 hole tournaments. So 27 holes of golf uh, down in Cantini National in Chicago, which was beautiful course, torrential downpour the night before, so it was car path only. Of 27 course. holes where you have to walk out to every ball was grueling, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to complain. It's fun golf tournament. Yep. Got to meet some YouTube golfers who were all great guys. Super nice to talk to, actually, all of them. Very down to earth. But close to the pin on one of the holes, um, my dad <laughs> hit an absolute knuckler of a shot, like thin to win, right? Right at the flag stick. Hits short of the green, rolls up, and I see it bounce off the pin to about like a foot off. Well, he ended up winning close to the pin, which was uh, uh, 54 holes, two nights stay at Lake Geneva National. Oh, damn. That sounds nice. For four people. Even better. So we're going to do that hopefully later this fall if he's up for it. Um, But, yeah, I don't know how we got on this tangent, but I am super pumped to go do that. And and that is the only prize that while he didn't get the hole in one, it was kind of nice because it was a big tournament. Um. Like, who else was, they had, like, like there, there was random, like, I don't know if you consider them celebrities, but, like, Kyle Kuzma was there. The How do I know that name? NBA player for um, he, He'd be a celebrity, Lakers. I think. And then. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. He played with LeBron for a while. I don't know if he's still with him. Football player was there. Reggie Bush, maybe? Really? That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, they finally gave him his Heisman back, I think. I could be that. completely wrong about that. There was a football player there, though. 
Chris is going to roast me. <clears throat> Chris Thrun was there roast as well. Him, Chris. He's roast going to roast him. me if I was wrong about that. But also remember, he hits the ball kind of like a, an amateur. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> yeah we brought in one of my buddies, Trevor, from uh, – uh, um, he's from Massachusetts. He he was a ringer. We needed him that day. <laughs> I mean, he carries like a one or a two handicap. Oh, that's like he, he, damn he's, good. Yeah, damn near a scratch golfer. Very nice guy. Um, but it was a great, you know, opportunity to play a course. All, and it was a private course, so I'll never play it again. Sure. But um, if people are getting like, you know, more into like the YouTube golf scene, they're doing these kind of fun tournaments and whatnot. I would heavily recommend it because yeah. I mean, if you're looking for a golf trip for guys or whatnot, I mean, that's the way to do it. I mean, they had, they did it right, right? So they had, you go, because they can only have so many cart girls out there, but they had coolers at almost every hole. It was sponsored by Corona. So it was all Corona and then their, their Corona seltzers or um, whatnot. And then almost every like six holes, they had different food. Really? And I'm talking like either people grilling, um, <clears throat> you know, a taco bar, you know, just, j it was all different stuff. So like, you know, for as much as they were like feeding you drinks, they were feeding you food as well. Because well, it was a 27 hole idea. tournament. We were out there all day. And you know yeah. how tournaments are. 18 is slow enough. Yeah, that's about five hours. So knock on. This was, this yeah, was eight hours. Eight, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez, yeah. Yep. You better have food present. Yep. Because if you have liquor at every hole, but that could be really bad. Super fun time. Um, Grant Horvat won it. He's another YouTube golfer, but he's a darn near pro. Yeah. Um, Sounds like an amazing time. It and was an and amazing And that was your time. birthday gift? Yes. <laughs> Sweet. Yes. So and I still owe her for that one. And your dad was there too? Yep, my dad My dad. And went he there got too. the closest to the pin. Shelly wasn't even there. Oh, well, that's okay if that was your birthday. No, but she present. loves golf. And, dad, she, yeah. and she... Did this for me and my friends because it was me, Chris, my buddy Trevor, and my dad. Okay. And we had a phenomenal time. Sure. Well, but, that sounds like a, <laughs> sounds like an amazing time to me. Yep. Yep. So, well, I don't know, I know where I we just, got onto this tangent is because we were talking about motorcycles and then something got in and then all of a sudden Chris so, got brought yeah, up because I, <laughs> oh hole in ones. Have we ever got close to a hole in one? I don't think he's gotten one. I don't think he has. No, one. he has not. He told us that last week. He said he's never gotten. He's been close. Yep. You know, yep. Some guys, oh, I know. And then I talked about the, the course I went to for my bachelor party. Yep. And my buddy got a hole in one in the ass. And I still can't remember the name of it. Nope. And we still will always. Um, it's on my bucket list, though, because, I mean. It was cool, though. It was a really neat little place. It's like in the middle of they had a, They had a couple of courses that were, or a couple of courses, a couple of holes from the Masters, or at least one, right? There was, um, what's the one where you had the little bridge, the number 13 at Augusta? Is that yeah. That one, they had a replica of that one. I know that for sure because I had a really nice drive and a really nice approach shot that hit the green, and then I parred it. And I'm like, oh, that was and nice. And I parred it. <laughs> and then my buddy, Paul Ebner, he's oh. not a golfer at all. And he don't no, I know Paul. Paul. <laughs> he takes an umbrella out of my bag or something. He goes, watch, I'm Mary Poppins. He goes across the little small bridge that was to get back on it. He jumps in the air oh, with it, no. and I give him the slow-mo video, and he's jumping in the air with the umbrella. And Polly Poppins, I call him. Oh, I thought you were going to say, he's like, you know what? I'm done golfing. I'm just going to caddy for no, you for today. No, you know, <laughs> it was funny, though, because the three guys I was with weren't. So we had eight guys there, four in one group, four in another. How I'm long like, ago was this? Just last September. Okay, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, literally coming up on not this weekend, but the next. Yeah. And so we had to split in four groups, and I was with my buddy Josh Harrison, who's been on the podcast. I was with Paul, who's also been on it, and Dave, who's just recently been on it. And Paul and Dave are definitely not golfers. They're like, we're not golfers. Mm -hmm. One of them is like, can I just borrow your clubs? I'm like, I don't think they'll let that happen. I'm like, you're probably going to have the rent clubs. Turns out one guy. Do we know why? Why you have to? Is there to? a reason for that? To make more money? No, I, I understand I that. I mean, okay, so first off, you guys, you already charge a cart fee for two people. Yeah. For one cart. Haunted? Haunted. No, will, will these mics pick that sound up, or did we just, like, pause for no reason? Nope. That, that'll pick that up. Okay. Yep. Okay. I had a cricket in the background one day, and you could hear it, and the cricket wasn't that loud. And you could hear How it. How long was the cricket on there for? Because well, five minutes. At least the last five minutes. For the whole episode. If you go back and listen to episode 20, uh, 34, Four thirty-five. 35 uh, I was with Travis Acre. What, what number is this? This is number 37. 37? That's yep, a good number. It's a great number, I guess. Is it a prime number? It, it might is. be, actually, because yeah. I don't think anything other than 37 times 1 can get to 37. Mm -hmm. I don't think there there's anything else. So we're prime? Yeah. 
Prime podcast. Yep. The, okay. Yep. Big so, day big day today too, you know. This is the last day without football for the rest of this year. Ooh, really? That's right. Tomorrow starts the season. It's already Thursday. Damn. That's right. See, and it's actually it's a short week. It's all we're all thrown off with Labor Day and whatnot. That is true. It's Chiefs versus uh Ravens, I believe. Ooh. AFC okay. Championship rematch. Okay. I think that's how they're starting it off. Which all that's right. okay. That's fine. Now you're a Viking fan. Mm-hmm. I'm a Packer fan. Lucky you. I am bummed about J.J. McCarthy. I never like to see a rookie injured before we even get to see them play. That Well, that yes, that does stink, too. Um, plus, I mean, I'd rather beat you when you guys are at your best anyways. So, Well, it's always happened. <laughs> I, I mean, anytime people go, oh, Backer, you know, Vikings fans are like, oh, Packers suck. And I'm like, well, we can't really say that. The only team we can ever say that sucks is the Lions. The Bears. They still have a championship. We don't. Well, there is that, yeah. So I always go off, of how many championships do you have? Well, the Packers have at least four or five. World champions before they became Super Bowls. I mean, but that, yeah, that was so long ago, The first right? two you got, Super Bowls. You got the recency bias, right? Especially now, that is so changed because of Tom Brady. What? And, and, and to some degree, Patrick Mahomes. Like, so what, what really qualifies as, as being good? Because at the end of the day, only one team can win. Yeah. And I, as, as much heartbreak as it is, I mean, if you're, if you're a, one of those teams that always gets to the NFC Championship, let alone, you know, the round of eight, it's like, that's pretty darn good. If you can consistently do that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because at that point, honestly, it's luck. Unless you're Tom Brady, who's got seven rings. He set the bar too high. We got to realize that's not going to happen again. Do, do you think something of that caliber will happen again? This could be a hot take. In, well, in our, I only our, think if it's going to happen, it's going to be with Patrick Mahomes because he just – was he Jordan at three Love. now? Well, I, I mean, Jordan Love, he got really good at the end of the last season. You could see a night and day difference from first half of last season yep. to the second half, and I'm like – so what do you oh, think? Is damn, he gonna, is, he, is he gonna have like a sophomore slump, or is he gonna? No, I think he's gonna improve. It always see, and the reason I say this because the Packers have consistently for the last couple decades or three decades have as had as long as we've been alive. As long as we've really been alive, they've always really had a starting quarterback, whether it was Favre, Rodgers, or maybe now um, Jordan Love. Well, Scotty, he's paid. He has to be, yeah. But it just some for some reason, I can, you know, when it comes to the Packers, they always seem to develop good quarterbacks. Vikings. Terrible. However, we'll get like a good receiving core, but no quarterback. We'll have a good running back, but nothing else. And the Packers just seem to have a really good quarterback, which everyone always says the Packer or the the NFL is a, a quarterback. It's a quarterback league. You have to have a good quarterback to succeed. And in my mind, that's oh, true. Course. I mean, you had Favre, you had Peyton Manning, you have Tom Brady, you got Patrick Mahomes, and that's just to name four of them. But it always took a good quarterback to get to that next upper echelon of championships. You know, it's, it's interesting to see how um, the quarterback has kind of changed the game of football. But also, uh, there's, what, 32 starting positions? 32 starting quarterbacks? Right? 32 yep, teams? 32 yeah. Teams. So, yep. so uh, and you take a look at how many court if you actually look into the draft, how many quarterbacks are drafted each year, and then every once in a while, an NFL meme page or something will post like, nobody from this quarterback class is even in the NFL anymore. I know. <laughs> That's so you know, true. do you think you know you talk about how we develop the quarterbacks as the Packers do, but could it be the scouting? I mean, I mean, it's quite possible. What do you, what do you think? How much do you think of it as taught versus like? finding somebody that can be taught gosh i think it has to do with who's your coach and how is their offense run and then it has to do with who can match that the best for whatever reason the vikings can never get one it never i mean we had kirk cousins and by no means is he an amazing quarterback because he has literally one playoff win but he has one of the best contracts of all time and we've had since i think it was 2000 we've had like 18 different starting quarterbacks oh yes yeah. Yeah, so, you guys are right up there with the Browns. So for whatever reason that has to do, it always has to do with something within there, and I don't know if it's scouting or whatever system we have, but like I said, we've always had pretty – Cursed. <laughs> it could be that. But we've always had really good, like, receivers. I mean, yep. you had 
at one point we had Randy Moss, Chris Carter, and Jake Reed. Fantastic trio. Their quarterback was Randall Cunningham on his way down. Brad Johnson, who was... Oh, Brad Johnson. Well, actually, you know what? He wasn't on his way down because he did win a championship with uh, Tampa Bay in, like, 2002. And then he had Dante Culpepper. And once Dante wow. Culpepper was gone, he was terrible. Yep. Randall Cunningham, we never heard much about. Brad Johnson, I will give. He did get a championship mm -hmm. with Tampa Bay in, like, 2002 or you three. You know, I do, I do feel kind of bad. Technically speaking, you guys should have had Aaron Rodgers this season. That, <laughs> that's exactly what I said. Technically I said, speaking. why are we not repeating history here? Yeah. He went to the Jets for one year. However, he did get injured. Favre didn't, but he should. So maybe be, we're just a year delayed. Maybe next year. You know, I was hoping for that too. I don't care because Favre was one of my favorite quarterbacks of all time. Even though he was on the Packers, I love that he was a tough nose sob. Like, oh yeah. He get hit. He was back up, and he was playing. Yep. Didn't he have the streak for the most starts, consecutive starts? Oh yeah. 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 Yep. I'm always like, gosh, that guy just he gets hit and he's back up. He gets hit, he's back up, and he's playing the next mm -hmm. game. And I liked it. When he came to Minnesota, I was like, I'm pumped. I, and he's still one of my favorite players. I'll always say my favorite player of all time was Randy Moss. But Favre is okay. right back there. But then even we had Favre. We still had a good receiving core. We had Sidney Rice, who once Favre was gone, he yeah. didn't have much of a year yep. after that. But right now we have – we could have had – well, we had Stephon Diggs, but we could have had hmm. – what would be really cool if we had Diggs, Thielen, and uh, Jefferson. That would have been really sick. And now we have Addison, yep. who is pretty good. But I don't know what Sam Darnold's going to do. He hasn't done anything yet. And I everyone goes, well, he was in a bad system. I find, um, I find the Aaron Jones pickup interesting. Yeah, as a running back? Yeah. That'll be... That'll be interesting. He's good. He he's still got life left in him, but like I feel, especially with the way running backs are treated in this league, he's definitely towards the end of his tenure. So it's like, yeah, to pick him up is to pick up a good running back. It's like you know, I don't know if they were thinking initially with JJ McCarthy, like okay, we're gonna have a window here to like try to make a playoff run, and this is gonna be our running back for it because I, I hope mean, so. The guy falls forward for five yards alone, let alone what he runs. <laughs> he's a big guy. So I've seen him. Aaron he's, Jones? Yeah. He's tiny. You think so? He's a small I mean, guy. Maybe he's just, I don't know, maybe he's just jacked and it makes him look he bigger. Is. He is. Yeah, he's, you know, 99% muscle, 0% yeah. body fat. Well, you know, I when I was at college. Um, he's uh, no Eddie Lacy. No, he's no. <laughs> he was just like a ball. Just yep. a ball running out. Yep. No, uh, David Johnson went to the University of Northern Iowa. And when I was a senior, he was a freshman. And it, when the season was over, he'd come play pickup basketball with us. I remember, I'm like, man, that guy is pretty jacked. And he was just a freshman, so he's like 18 years old. And very athletic, too. But then when I saw him get into the league, I'm like, man, he's even bigger. But then I see some of these other guys, I'm like, damn, they are huge. Mm -hmm. And Aaron Jones, maybe it's just because he's jacked, 0% body fat. Maybe that's why I think he's just so big. But, I yeah, mean, we'll the, see. The other thing that's nice about him, too, is, you know, he was a great locker room player. Um, he comes from a military family, very well, uh, very well mannered, you know, very well respected. It's just he like he, he was like of any of the losses over the past season. I mean, David Bakhtiari, our left tackle. I mean, he's just made out of glass. Sure. Like, the, the writing was on the wall like, hey, you know, it's it's time to kind of move on based upon your 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 salary cap and all the other financial things in it. I just don't fully understand that. But Aaron Jones, I was like, oh, like I really just. I feel like he's the kind of guy you just want on your team. So it's a good pickup for you guys. Yeah. Um, he came from the Packers, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yep. Yep. So, but we got Josh Jacobs. And honestly, I've heard high praise from him, but I don't know much about Josh Jacobs. Well, and, you know, I go back to the quarterback thing, and I'm saying a quarterback makes a big, a big difference in my mind. And here's why I say that. We've had so many great receivers, some top receivers in the league of all time, mm -hmm. still have no championship. Barely a playoff win, if any. And then you go down and you think about some of the receivers that Tom Brady's had. Now, granted, he had Randy Moss for a few seasons, but to be honest with you, I can't hardly name any of the receivers that Tom Brady's had. Patrick you, Mahomes There's, there's had. only two that pretty much everyone can name. Um, well, not a receiver, Gronk. Or a the tight end. The tight end, excuse me. I mean, And it, then um, Edelman. Slot. Yeah, you had some slot receivers, but it was no, like, when I think of a receiver, I'm did thinking he, he, Jerry Rice. I'm thinking. You never had Calvin Johnson, right? No. No. Calvin Johnson was a Detroit Lion th all the way through his whole career. That's I what I thought. Okay. Yep. I don't know but why I was thinking, thinking of those guys. Like even reason. Patrick Mahomes. I can't even name one receiver other than Tyreek Hill, who is no longer with them, 
And then obviously Travis Kelsey, who's another tight end. Didn't he have Juju at one point? It's possible. But Juju must not be that big of a name for me, at least. And the way I think of big names is, does everyone know that if I said Randy Moss to most people, they would know who Randy Moss is. If I said Jerry Rice to most people, they know who that is. If I said Juju Smith-Schuster, half of the people maybe know that. Right. And that's where I'm like, that eh, wasn't big enough. But, you but think then of, again, do you think, does everyone know Devontae Adams now? Maybe because of the Netflix series. Other than that, no. And but they I should. Him, and I don't think of him as a big time receiver. Really? I, I don't. Interesting. Because um, I mean, you got hit guys in. You got like what? DeAndre Hopkins. People know that name, right? Possibly. I mean, I kind of know it, and the only reason I know it is because my buddies are into See, trading cards. Th- and this is this, and that's just it. This is a good conversation to have with you because we discussed it the other day. Neither one of us really do fantasy. I, I tried once, I, and twice, I have and tried before, but I it's never really <laughs> it never worked works out, out for me. What's helped me with learning all of these um, people, especially across the AFC, since mm-hmm. we're NFC teams and whatnot, is honestly um, red zone. Just seeing highlight plays. Oh sure, yes, the right? NFL red zone where yep. they clip. Okay, yep, I know what you're talking about. Because that's you know. Unless there's a high-profile game on, you know, or a Packer game or, you know, basically, so if, if I'm not watching a Packer, Viking, Lion, Bear game, I'm watching Red Zone. Sure. That's just how I enjoy watching football. Yeah, because you get every game yep. at some point. And I just want to watch the important stuff, especially when it comes down to, um, as Scott Hansen likes to say, um, the witching hour, which is basically like the last half hour of every time frame. So, you know, 2.30, 3 o'clock, and then 5.30, 6 o'clock. It's just chaos going from one game to the next, seeing everything that happens. Yes. Did you, you ever watch Red Zone? Nope. I, I, well, when I lived in Atlanta, I did because my ex, ha- her family had it, and it just flipped around. But otherwise, is I'm only really focused on the Vikings. And I don't even really get into football until about October, mid-October. So once the, the days get crappier out, I, then I'm more into football. But until those days are like a Sunday for me, if the days are nice, it's golf, or I'm going on a motorcycle ride or a car cruise somewhere. Sure. I can watch football when it's snowing out, but I'm not going to waste a good 70-degree day and watch football. That's why, that's why I'm super pumped. Packers' first game, people are indifferent about it because it's in Brazil. Oh, so is it a different time? No, so it's, it's Friday night against the Eagles, 7.15 Central. Right, different time. Which is still <laughs> weird to me uh, because, you know, you can still the, – the time zones still go to the southern equa- – um, um, you know, south of the equator. Um, but, uh, yeah, we got a Friday football game. But that's okay because Friday night you're probably going to be out somewhere that has a game on. There's a possibility. I mean, that's the kind of thing, what, 7.15 game, go out to dinner Friday night, get done with dinner, maybe – watch you know the first half at exactly the bar or something. but yeah. the problem is it's like I, i'm a happy hour kind of person yeah you know I, i'd go to port or to two fathoms for like a happy hour beer sure and then i'm home in the evening I, you okay. know I, i'm not sticking around at a bar like seven o'clock especially it's like i don't really yep. go out then if i'm gonna go out for a nightcap like that like we've discussed i'm gonna go to muddle time where i can get my old-fashioned <laughs> yeah, that's right i've only been there one time Really? I got to go there more. Yeah. And now there's another place coming in town um, called uh, the Lafayette. The bourbon? Yes. The bourbon taste. What do you know about that place? I, as much as you know. I, I drove by. They I look said, like they're ready to open. Well, I know the, o- the owner, I believe, is Adam Clater. Why does that name sound so familiar? Because he has rental properties downtown and, okay. and some Airbnbs. Is he from here? Yep. I went to, he was a year behind me at St. Martin's. Gotcha. So I know him personally. Okay. Yep. And well, good. I'm looking forward to it. I, well, that's what I'm thinking too. I'm like, wow, a, a bourbon whiskey. I hope that it's well received because, as much as I am into bourbon and you are, and I'll do my like, best to keep it afloat. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. Like I, that's another thing. I like to go to these places to support them. So hopefully they stay open because, like Two Fathoms or when it was Island City, I always wanted to go there because I'm like, I'd rather have, I'd rather go support this place and that beer if it's possible, but then I also want to support the other places, but I like to have something that was locally crafted. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, like where Muddle Time is, that used to be a wine bar. Yeah. And we Yikes. would go there every so often, but I'm not big into wine. Right. And right. so the Lafayette, if it is what I've heard it's going to be, which is bourbon whiskey bar or sampling, I look forward to that. 
That and it I might be too. a huge hit with people our age. Well, plus also, um, well, I mean, I, I've had conversations with the management at Muddle Time, and even they're like, you know, we have a number of college kids coming here to one not only when their parents are in town because they want to go to some place like sure. this, um, whether it's that or Nosh or you know, the, the really the only option before those two were here was signatures. Yeah. Um, that they also like, you know, just because we are college kids, you know, we like to splurge and have a nice cocktail. We're not sure. all drinking, you know, Keystone Light and whatnot. <laughs> That's a cheap hams, cheap buzz. <laughs> right? Because um, we've yeah. all been there, right? But at the same time, you know, the, we, we can still appreciate a nice cocktail. So, and it was interesting perspective because I'm like, huh, like, you know, that's, you know, that's exactly where I would have been had I had gone to school here and whatnot, um, other than high school here. So, yeah, it's nice to see some of those places. And also with like the, the Lafayette coming up, I'm like, I just like to see how a new place does what's their take on an old fashioned. I'm at, I, that, that's the one yeah. drink I'm at the point where it's like, I know how I make it and I can appreciate how different places make it. And I kind of look forward to it. If yep. you know, I, you know, I like it too. And I, to be honest with you, it's maybe cause I'm very green into the old fashioned. I don't remember ever having a bad one. And maybe it's cause each one has a similar taste, but as long as it's all similar, I'm not going to know the difference. Well, I, you know, and you will. There, there is, you there is no such thing as a bad one. It's just a style, right? So, sure. So, a Wisconsin old fashioned. What's that? That has Sprite in it. Oh, so okay. If you, if you, you compare to Club I, Soto or what? I put nothing in. Oh, you don't put anything in it. Okay. No, it's it's just bourbon, bitters, and simple syrup. Okay. Pure. That's, that's and the all other it one is. has a little Sprite in it or something. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's a Wisconsin style. So we'll either have Club Soda or Sprite in it. Okay. So, so I've had those. I know that for sure. Yep. And those are pretty common. Um, so I know I don't like those. And then there's all these other terms out there that I don't fully understand. It's like, um, so my understanding is I like it press, which is no filler. What? It's, it's, two, it's two different terms that have the same definition. No filler or press basically means no Sprite or soda water. Okay. It. Yep. That's what I figured. It's almost like straight um, up. And then it. I also, I, for whatever, for, for just maybe aesthetics, I like it over a big cube, but it needs to be pre-chilled. Okay. If you don't pre-chill it and then you just pour it over the big cube, one, generally speaking, you serve it and it's still somewhat warm. And two, it makes the big cube, um, melt quicker, which waters down your drink. Yep. Not everyone can appreciate that, but say you do prefer a watered down drink or you want to have that old fashioned say for half hour or an hour to have it, it's going to sit if it's pre chilled on that ice cube for that long time without getting too diluted. Uh, yes. Now and I'm getting really into the Scientology. That's okay. Of, of, that's okay. The mixology of these drinks. Well, because some people say, uh, you know, I, I, my buddy Josh said, some people say, uh, you can't have any ice with it. It needs to be neat, nothing on it, not on the rocks, because it distills the taste a little bit. And there's other people that say, put it in there, put a couple drops of water in it, distills the taste a little bit, makes it taste better. So, And it's all personal preference, right? So really if I'm is. making it for somebody who really likes a strong drink, I'm going to mix it less in the ice prior. Okay. You might get a slightly smaller drink, but it's going to be more dense. Sure. Versus somebody I know who doesn't like it or needs it watered down a little bit more, I'm going to make it, and I'm going to mix it a little bit longer within that ice just to dilute it a little bit more. Yep. So it's, you know, it's just a learning game. I like it diluted a little bit, too. Mm -hmm. But going back to your point, I really hope that people actually go and support the bourbon whiskey bar because we've never had anything like Try that Try something new, right? That, that's, right. That's, that's what we got to do a little bit more in this town. And I'm assuming they're going to probably have, you know, cocktail drinks, not just straight this, straight that. So I'm sure. What, what are tapas? It's like a tapas bar? Tapas? Tapas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Either. Look it up on your phone, I guess. Yeah, I might have <laughs> Look up a tapas bar. I don't even know. Am I keeping up with you? Yeah, you're keeping up. Good, good, good. But um, yeah, I mean, I my, my, I picture like hors d'oeuvres or like um, tapas, tapas. I've heard that term before, though. I know. So yeah, you look it up because you're the research guy. My phone's recording us right now. Okay, okay. <laughs> Tapas, well, you know. Tapas, T-A-P-A-S. T-A-P-A-S. You know what, folks? You're going to find out what a tapas bar is right now. But uh, I, I like my bourbon straight up for the most part. Do you have a favorite bourbon other than Bullet, or is Bullet your favorite? Um, because you said you don't really drink it straight up much or on the rocks. You're more of the small Spanish appetizers or snacks that are often served with drinks in a bar. So it's just perfect. Yeah. So it's appetizers, just snacks. Appetizers, yeah. 
Oh. And you got to have that. You got to have that for yeah. sure. Yeah, no, I, I like a lot. Um, other than Bullet, what would be your other go-to? So it really depends. Okay, right? So um, Bullet is perfect for making an old-fashioned, in my opinion. It's, it's just it's a good classic bourbon. But otherwise, if I'm going to be drinking any bourbon, it's just bourbon with a splash of Sprite. Okay. Right, so I need to I I need, try that. I, I need to put a little something in there. That's what that's what I spend a lot of time doing. So like, if I'm getting a mixed drink, um, that that's what it's gonna be. Okay, um, which I don't do all that often, but um, it also kind of hurt it hurts some people's feelings because they'll take a really high end bourbon or potentially high end bourbon and yeah. um, dilute it with Sprite. I'm like, oh, why would you do that? Um, Blanton's is really nice. I have that. That was on my podcast number two. What Eagle Josh Rare. Yeah, I've heard of that. Eagle Rare is good. Um, not a super expensive one, but it is hard to find, at least around here. One of my favorites that is, and I've said this on previous podcasts, one of my favorites, it's not expensive. It's like 40 bucks maybe. Um, Long Branch by Wild Turkey. Long Branch, okay. Yep. And I think someone told me that Matthew McConaughey is the endorser of it. Had no mm -hmm. idea. Still don't have any idea. But it's really good, and I don't know what it is about it, but I love it. Yep. And you just straight up on the rocks. Um, Matt and, then, and I put down a whole, we polished a whole one off during Christmas Eve a couple of years ago. Yep. Um, wow. <laughs> and then we raced our RC cars through the uh, the winter weather. Nice. Um, and then I like trying stuff, you know, just as much as we like going to breweries, um, we go to distilleries too. So that same place that has that black cherry um, um, whiskey, um, they are a distillery that's 10 minutes up the road from our place up north or my parents' place up north. And, uh, um, you know, they, they make a nice bourbon there, so it's nice to try the local stuff. I, I like um, Wyoming whiskey. That That is a brand that's from Wyoming. Okay. Um, it is a whiskey. It's nice. But, you know, I, I can see myself. I, I branched out. You know, I, I don't drink like a Jack Daniels anymore. I, I Crown's a little too sugary for me. Uh, uh, that was the next question I had. Um, I saw, that's where I started. Sure. Well, Crown had like a Blackberry come out. Did you try that? It was really popular, and I I've think never it got sold it. out. I've never got into, the, like, the uh, Blackberry Crown, Crown Apple, Vanilla Crown. I've never really done that stuff. Well, the Blackberry, I guess, just came out, and it was really popular. It sold out everywhere, and I don't know if it's still available. But a couple of my buddies sent me photos, and like, oh, this is fantastic. So it must be similar to what you were talking mm -hmm. about on the one. Um, mm -hmm. What one was it? You said it was like a just told Black me. Cherry. Black Cherry from where? Um, Northern Waters Distillery is the okay. place called up north. Um, really nice. Um, I'll have to bring a bottle for you sometime. Have you been to the Lacrosse Distillery at all? No. Uh, right downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, once, maybe twice. Okay. And I've been there maybe Not handful of times. Not enough to remember it. Okay. So I've been there a handful of times. They have a rye whiskey mm -hmm. bourbon. It's called Tootaloo, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I love it. On the rocks, it's good. Mixed with something, it's fantastic as well. They have some pretty decent food there, but the ambiance is pretty neat too. And I, I mean, I was telling my buddy this today early. I'm like, you can give me a cheeseburger from McDonald's and expensive beer, and I'm good. You ever, you ever been to La Cave in the Cross? The what? La Cave. No. Yeah. What's uh, that? And where? It is um, La Chateau is the restaurant. Okay. It if is if you, if you're just getting off of the bridge downtown Lacrosse there. Yep. It's like you get off the bridge, you take a left, you take a right, and there's an old I want to say like a mansion or like a manor, and that's La Chateau. Okay. Their downstairs is a bar and it's called La Cave. They have probably some of the best old fashions I've ever had there, among gotta, other drinks. I gotta take Steph there. Yes, you do. It's like a speakeasy? Kind of. Do you have to have a passcode? No, but it it, but <laughs> it, it it is down a spiral staircase. That's pretty cool though, still. Um, and the it, it's it, it's on the it's it's in the downstairs of of the manor, and what you can you can make sure you tour the whole place because it's just it's beautiful. It's, it's an old you know house for somebody at some point. That's but it cool. is a restaurant, and downstairs it's on the original sandstone foundation. So that is that is the walls down there. Oh, cool! It is. It is. It is a great ambiance place. It's a little bit. Of, it's got a little wine cellar feel too. But um, they have phenomenal drinks there. I'm gonna have to. And check they that out. make a a great smoked old fashioned. Yes, I had a smoked old fashioned at the place called Smoke in Rochester. The mm -hmm. the then that was came in like this little um, it looked like a lantern case, and it was all smoky. And I had it, and it was fantastic. So then. After my wife 
she said she knew I liked that. For let's see, it was my birthday last year, maybe. She bought me this little box kit, and what it had was a little thing in there where you put shavings of uh, mm -hmm. some wood, yep. and each one were flavored, and then it came with a torch. Yep, little put little it over, chips. Yeah, and then it went over top of my cup, torched it, and it went and went into my cup, and it made it smoked, and it was and it's awesome. We use it all the time. Yep. I yep. love that thing. So That's if you like idea. a smoked old fashioned, that is the place to go. La Cave at La Charmant, uh, at the Charm, uh, no, not the Charmant, La Chateau. La Chateau. And what was it called? La Cave. La Cave. I have got to go down there. When the weather gets bad, we got to go there because yep. it'll be something to do on a Friday. Well, or let, let us know. I mean, like, you know, we'd be happy to meet you down there. Sure, a bunch of us would, but. Um, I bet you would. <laughs> I yep. bet a lot of people um, would love to Dan go. Daniel, the bartender there, really nice guy. I, I, yeah, I, I gotta I, check that out. Yeah, I always get acquainted with the bartenders and whatnot, just because um, I just like to ask them how they make their drinks and you know whatnot. I like to sure. learn, be for for my own, you know. Okay, well, why why did you do that or what did you use in there? Yeah, kind of thing. Every little thing makes a drink different. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, I like I said, my my most recent change is is switching to actually taking brown sugar, um, and melting it down with the water or diluting it to really? to, to do my old fashions. Ooh, that brown sugar. I love it's brown sugar. It's just ever so slightly a different flavor um, for the old fashioned. So it, it's just it just adds a little something different. That's awesome. Um, I got I probably gotta get to the point where I gotta stop telling everybody all these things so I can just have my own secrets. Don't tell all your secrets. You have but, to come to the cabin. Um, what about uh, the Speakeasy in Rochester? You've been there. I have not, and I've heard all about it. It is phenomenal. Really? So we've heard about that, and and the reason I'm I I don't know what it is about Speakeasies. I think it's cool. But that's my motorcycle riding gang, gang in quotes. Okay, my gang in yep. quotes. It's, <laughs> anyways. What we do is we just uh, we have we're a speakeasy riding group or whatever. We put patches on our vest of any breweries we've been to or distilleries. And this place is an actual speakeasy, right? And yes. so that intrigues me even more because I have my motorcycle vest. They have all the patches on it from any place that has patches. Mm -hmm. And then I hear about a speakeasy in Rochester. And then there's also, I was telling you. A this little, one's actually behind a bookshelf. That's awesome. And not this weekend, but the following. I'm going to Nebraska to watch Nebraska mm -hmm. versus University of Northern Iowa, where I went to school at. Yep. And I guess there's a speakeasy place what, like there. Like the Cornhuskers? The Cornhuskers nice. versus the University of Northern Iowa Panthers. Yep. Who's going to win? Probably the Cornhuskers, <laughs> but I will keep my faith in my you alma mater. Know. You never know. You never know. But my buddy Brett told me that there's a speakeasy there that we have to go to. I'm like, perfect. But I've heard about the one in Rochester, and now I am even more intrigued because you just said it's a place you got to hit up. Yes. And do you um, have to have like a passcode to get in, or you just walk in? Uh, no, there is um, kind of a hint. A hint. Yeah, and if uh, you can't figure it out, eventually they open it up for you. <laughs> Let me in. I got money. All right, you're in. It, it is. Um, it's a neat experience. You walk in there. It is. It's. It's so unassuming. I, I don't want to tell you too much because I want you to experience it. Yeah. No, not a problem. Um, Just tell us where it's at. Downtown. Uh, yeah, downtown yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Rochester. Right, yeah, right downtown. Um, Perfect. Do you that know works. what it's called? I don't know what it's called, but I've heard all about it, and I've actually eaten downtown at. Was it Five West or something like that? I think it's. Similarly, Five right West, across, um, like right across the street, almost. No, no, no. Five, Five West is over by like Costco. Well, there's another one downtown. I thought um, there's two locations. Chester's? No, there's or another. No, one. There's another Five West. Downtown. I think there's a Five West downtown as well, or right. at least, or at least it's related to it. But in any case, there's one that's like, in like the second floor of like a hotel. I think it is. But anyway, I was there like two years ago. Ah, bitter and poor. Bitter and poor. Bitter and poor. Okay, for those who like speakeasies or like the bitter and poor in Rochester is, you know, I, I talk about how good a lot of these places are, but theirs is the best. It is 100% the best, in my opinion, how they make the old-fashioned. I mean, you know, the ice cube they give it to you on is stamped with B&P on it, the bitter Sick, and poor. dude. That's like, awesome. It's, it's, it, they, they, they absolutely nail it there. Yeah. Um, I have one of those um, rubber... Um, ice cube trays that yeah. makes them like the big cubes, big cubes, yeah. yeah. And I love it; it's yep. awesome. And then by the time I'm done with my drink, it's almost diluted, but my drink, phenomenal. Yep. Because I drink all my bourbons usually on the rocks. Yep. Yep. So that 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 is a place I would definitely 
recommend. Uh, and what's it called again? Bitter and Poor. Bitter and Poor. I, yep. You know, I go to Rochester so often. I need to go there. You're good. Uh, so, and yeah, I'm, I'm there fairly regularly, too. So you just let me know. <laughs> I'm there fair, fairly regular. I love it. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say something to you because I've been thinking about this a whole last week since we talked about doing this podcast. You're a finance guy. Mm-hmm. Do you ever listen to Dave Ramsey? No. Nope. Okay. There's a guy on there. His name is George Camel, and you mm-hmm. look just like him. I look just like him. Well, very similar. Who is this? He's a guy that he gives out financial advice. Sure. And his name is George Camel. I think it's with a K. K A M E L. I think you look like him. His beard's a little bit more prominent. But he's got like George the more Camel. unique glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the hair, got the hair going on. Yes, here. Well, you don't have your, you have your hat on today, so it doesn't yep, really help yep. out. No, I, I I can see it though. Yeah, and I'm like, Aaron reminds me of him because you have like the more unique glasses. Like today, you're yep. wearing clear le- or clear yep. frames, and he always wears like maybe like a tannish brown frame. Yeah, honestly. yeah, and I, and like they just just a little more trendy, I guess you would say, kind more of more trendy. Frame. Yeah, um, and I've worn glass. I've had glasses since I was three years old, so it's it's nothing new to me. No, no. I think you look like him. And I'm like maybe maybe you got a style from him. I don't even know. I'm like. I guess not because you don't listen to it, so it doesn't matter. No, and I and I don't listen to a lot of finance stuff. I mean, you know, I, um, I'll I'll look and see like what the markets are doing and yeah. whatnot. But in reality, I mean, everything I do is just based around the individual and planning and whatnot. Investments kind of handle themselves. Sure, sure. But yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's you know, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was a lot of words and a whole lot of nothing right there. That's all right. I just want to let you know you look like someone out there that. Yep. Well, I listen to it. I mean, it's in my background. I'm not always listening to every single word, but I do sometimes. So my buddy I does this. I don't like so. Go ahead. Sorry. My buddy does this. He he watches a podcast to see what the person looks like if he doesn't know who they are. And then he listens to it while he does like yard work or whatever he might be doing. Same thing. So like I listen to Dave Ramsey here and there. And I wanted to see what these people look like when I hear them in my headphones. And I saw this guy, I'm like, well, that looks like Aaron. It looks a lot like Interesting. Aaron, just with a little bit more of a beard and obviously different color so glasses. So there's, there's certain instances where it's like I'm really intrigued and wonder what somebody looks like and certain times where I'm not. So I am more a YouTube person than I am a podcast person. Okay. Uh, my wife and I will listen to podcasts. She does it much more so than I do, but we like Morbid. Um, What's that? Mor- hey, Morbid is, is, um, is a, it's a, it's a couple of girls. One of them, I believe... Uh, one of them is, is not nothing. I wouldn't say medical, but, um, some sort of criminology. Okay. So they, they discuss, um, murders, disappearances, some sort of hauntings, but anything where like any, some sort of a like traumatic criminal event went on and they would discuss those stories. Sure. So, um, I feel like a lot of girls are into that. Yeah. Murder mysteries. And, and, And morbid is huge on the podcast spectrum. I think they have like 600 episodes. Wow. I'm at 37. I'm working my way. Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. I mean, when, <laughs> when did you start this? January 1, 2024. 37, two thirds of the way through the year. I mean, it's yeah. just one per week. So I'm 37 weeks in. It's very easy. Yeah. Yeah. I have, and I had one special episode in there when we had to put our dog down. Yeah. I but saw that. One that. D- God. I, so I saw that. I'm like, nope, can't watch that one. You know, actually, and I'm a guy and a guy. I don't know if you are this kind of guy where if there's a movie about a dog, I'm not watching nope. it. I don't give a shit what you say. Marley and me, anything like that. No, nope, That was the last not. dog movie I watched. I'll never not watch another one. Not a chance. So. Not the, even like, I don't like Air Bud. What about Air Bud? I've never seen one of those. I feel like I probably have as a kid, but I probably wouldn't now. I can't say I have. I mean, he was playing basketball. I can't imagine there's any morbid scenes. Right. My Marley and me, no way in nope. hell am I watching that. Um, but anyways, going even the off, dog from Up, you know, I never saw that Pixar and I, movie. And I don't want to watch it's that. a Pixar movie, right? Yeah, I don't want to watch that. But dogs have my soft spot. They're, they have my Same. sweet spot. And and I've had to put down too many dogs growing up. You know, we have, we, yeah, we have a we have a four year old, almost a four year old dog now, and it's just like the one thing I always hold on to um, is the fact that, and for all the dog people, it's you know, dogs might only be a part of your life, but you're all of theirs. Right, but to them, oh, yeah. you're their entire life. Yeah, that's exactly it. And, and that's what you, you got to remember, right? You yeah. you gave them their life. That's exactly it. And they it. brought joy to you, yep. and that's all you can ask for. And, you know, so that was the thing. When I did that episode, I kind of just did it 
on the spur of a moment. So my real estate office is just a door, a door away. And I came over here. I'm like, I need to just record that. I just need to do something and talk about him. And that's what I did. It was really nothing. Um, it wasn't really anything sad. It was just talking about the fun times we had together. It's, it's important to get, it's, it's a, it's, this can be almost a form of like self therapy. That's what you said when you walked in, you go, I'm on the therapy uh, yeah, yeah, couch. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, all right, right. Let's talk about our feelings. That's, <laughs> that's where we're it, at. Yeah. No. Um, but you no, know, just like anything else in life, it's, it's not good to keep things bottled up. No, it's not. You got to get them out whatever way, whatever makes the most sense. Yeah. However you can do so. I mean, you know, that, that's what you got to do. So to sit down and make the podcast yeah. and just like, reminisce in the good times and it was tough to keep the tears back to be honest with you but i did it uh just talking about all the fun we had together and when i think about that i'm like wait a second steph had this dog before i got before her and i ever met and he was like five when we met and he had another 10 years with me that's awesome because there's certain dogs that don't even make it 10 years and he had 15 years and nine months of his life mm -hmm. and i'm like that's about all you can ask of a dog, really. It's like 15 to 16 years at best. Right. I'm like, so I made it, and it wasn't as sad as I thought it would be because I'm with you on those. Like, I'm not going to watch a dog movie anymore. I, I Even Steph is like, let's watch this. We're not going to be sad. I'm like, guarantee there's going to be a sad part in there, and I'm not yep. going to want to watch that. Yep. So we watched the movie Dog with Channing Tatum. Not a bad movie. Mm. Okay. The ending of it was like, he had this dog from the military or something, and then he had to take it back to the military base, and he was driving away, and the dog was waiting for him to come back. So that was the sad part. He comes back, gets the dog. I mean, mm -hmm. so not that bad of a movie. But other than that, Marley and me was mm -hmm. always sticks in my head. And yep. I'm like, no way in yep. hell am I doing that again. Yeah. No, I, I know what you mean, though. But at the end of the day, my only other saying about the dogs is you're just people in general, um, you know, don't be sad they're go that they're gone. Be happy that you knew them. That's the way I always look at it, too. Same with my grandparents. Like, some people be like, oh, man, you're, you know, grandpa, grandma died. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm like, you know what? I'm actually, I had 30-plus years with a lot of my grandparents. I have one living grandparent left still. I had four all the way up until I was 33, I think it was. I have three still. You still have three. I still have three. And so right around that, and I had all four at your age. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always like, you know what? Don't be sorry. I'm like be happy that they live that long mm -hmm. because I got to spend a lot of time all the way to my grandparents who were 92, right. um, upper eighties. I'm like, man, I, I'm, I'm not even sad. I even gave, um, a speech at my grandma's funeral for both my grandpa and my grandma because my grandpa died when he was, it was COVID years. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't really have a funeral quote unquote. So I did a, right. a speech after my grandma's and tied it all into one. And it wasn't even, it wasn't even sad. It was just like, these are the memories I had with him. It was amazing to have those memories with them because some people mm -hmm. don't even get them that long. And to be honest with you, I've grown up with kids that didn't even get their parents until they were in high school. Right. That's even worse. I'm like, holy cow, can you imagine that? So I'm like, don't feel bad about that kind of stuff. Feel privileged or lucky that they were here that oh, long. Oh, of course. So that's why I always look at it as it's probably that glass half full rather than half empty. Yeah. It's that look, you know? And you have to. I mean, yep. like, it, it, life's a mindset through everything. You know, it really is. Yep. yep. So, um, I don't know, man. We've been going for an hour and 50. Oh, an hour and 50? What time is it? <laughs> it's almost 9 o'clock, man. Oh, are you trying to kick me out already? It is 9 o'clock. No, I'm not trying to kick you out. I'm just seeing if you want to uh, add any more to the podcast. Um, is there more that we haven't talked about that you wanted to? I don't know. And we talked about golf. We talked about life. Yep. Vacations. Yep. Just experiences in general. Kind of talked about motorcycles for a moment. <laughs> hey, they kind of wrapped, that, that, that was all wrapped into travel. That really degree. was wrapped into travel. Yeah. So I guess my, I guess my thing will be uh, golf, travel. What's my third topic that we talked about? Oh, that's right. I did your notice that you do Your lookalike. Your look -alike. <laughs> My lookalike. Um, just for those who are like trying to like, okay, who is he, who is he talking about? Yeah. Like, um. You wore your hat, though, today, so it doesn't help me out. Yeah, no, I mean. It's all good, though. I don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. A lot of golf. Yeah. A lot of travel. Um, it's it's got to it's gotta be, you know. Family. Uh, I was going to say bourbon or. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, just. Old uh, fashion specific. Not even that, just, just how different ways do it. Different what? 
how, how different places make oh, theirs, sure. right? So, so, so just because you might have a particular way you like it, it's important to branch out and like try the new um, whiskey bar or, you know, try and go to a different location because there might be something better or right. something you didn't think of. Never hurts to try anything. I mean, mm-hmm. you're already going to spend your money. So right. even right. if you spend 10 the, bucks the at a place, is, like though, whatever. Uh, and um, the shirt I almost wore today was given to me by my friend Peter, um, who I met not too long ago. But What's his just, last name? What? What's his last name? Bell. Peter Bell. Peter Bell. Peter Bell the pilot. Peter Bell the pilot. Peter Bell the pilot. Um, he got me a shirt because we, we became fast friends, and uh, it's just a sweatshirt, but it just says, I'll just have the chicken tenders. <laughs> because I am absolutely probably one of the pickiest people you'll ever meet. For food? For food. Okay. For food. Everyone tells me the same damn thing. But unless it's like a coffee drink, because I don't, I don't, I don't prefer like, a, a, like it was like a coffee martini or whatever that they have. Yeah, I'm not big into coffee at all. Um, you might. I be. will. I will try a lot of different drinks and bourbon. You know, I, I've tried scotch. Terrible to me. Okay. So far, but. I will try a lot of different drinks, but I am the pickiest eater to ever meet. Really? Yes. Okay. It, it becomes it becomes a, a game basically for anybody new that I meet or any any friends of mine. Every time we go out to dinner, yep. you know, um, we'll go out to the freight house on the cross. Oh, I'll try the crab legs. No. Okay. I will pay you to try that. No. <laughs> game pay you to try it. Nope. Up. Won't work. Okay. So before we end this podcast. What is your absolute go-to meal then? Go-to meal? Yep. And I, you want me to go first? Sure. So you can think? My absolute favorite meal, hibachi. If you take me to, well, my wife makes very fantastic stuff on our Blackstone. You take me to Benihana's, uh, you'll have to cut me out of the restaurant then because I'll eat myself till I'm sick. That's how good I love hibachi. So you give me mm-hmm. chicken Chicken teriyaki with fried rice and, you know, all the things that come with whatever Benihana serves. Uh, you know, I don't even need to do the choo-choo train. I don't even need that. Yeah. You just give me the teriyaki chicken and rice and everything else that comes with hibachi. That is my absolute favorite meal, and I could eat that probably every single day. Um, so that's my go-to meal if, if someone says, what, what are you having? Teriyaki chicken hibachi. Or just hibachi in general. You could probably you put shrimp in there. Throw shrimp in there, it's even better for me. I'm not the biggest beef eater when it comes to hibachi, but chicken. Oh, yeah. So that's my go-to meal. And people always call me picky because I like things very plain. Give me a salad. All it has to be is lettuce. Put some uh, cucumbers in it. Maybe a little bit of tomatoes. Shredded cheese and, cu- uh, and croutons. That's all I need. I don't need any dressing. Um, you give me pop tarts, make them burnt. I'm good. You give me a pizza. I'll eat a cheese pizza just as well as I eat any other pizza. So I'm very, very basic, and people call call me picky because I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm making it very easy on you because I'm very basic. Yep. So well, okay. So here, we'll, we'll 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 end it with this. You you talked about your favorite things. I'll list before we end this everything that I eat. I eat peanut butter sandwiches, <laughs> chicken, <laughs> pasta, plain rice. Wait, did you say pasta plain? Yes. Butter, butter noodles. Oh, that's fine. Too. Butter noodles. Yep. Okay. Um, I said peanut butter sandwiches, right? You did say that first. Peanut butter sandwiches, pepperoni pizza, chicken, pasta, rice, and bison filet and garlic, ma- garlic mashed potatoes. Dude, thanks that- for having me on here, sir. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. <sighs> we're not done yet. Okay, so what do I you have? I should give my me? outro. What? I give my outro. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. So and that that is my one fancy meal: bison <laughs> fillet with garlic mashed potatoes. Bison fillet. What? Le- lean that meat, guy. less yes. fat. Lean meat. And I like venison. So yeah. Someone, if someone makes venison jerky, I'm all about it. So that is, so if we are going out to a fancy dinner, as long as it's like a steak place, I, I like a fillet. Okay. Yep. And, and, you know, sometimes I, I'm so, it's weird. I'm, like, very plain, but then I'll be very exotic on certain mm-hmm. things. Like, give me mahi-mahi. I'm cool with that. Give me... Um, no fish. Sword fit. You don't like that seafood? Nope. Nope. Okay. Give me shrimp. Give me mussels, all that kind Pass. of stuff. I'll eat that. 
So some people are like, well, you're very picky. I'm like, well, would you eat that? And they go, no. I'm like, well, then you're picky too. Like I said, that's what, that's when it becomes a game with my friends. Be like, will yeah. you eat this? Will you eat that? <laughs> nope. You never know nope. what I might eat. Nope. That's the one thing. Yep. Dude, it was awesome having you on this podcast. I. You're just saying that because you have to. No, because we had two hours and we haven't stopped talking. Okay. <laughs> We're almost at two hours and we haven't stopped talking. That means you got to come back for part two. Oh, for sure. I will absolutely be back. Whatever that'll be. I think that's going to be you making me old fashions. Yes, it will. We're going we're gonna to do We're going to get some aprons. You know what it could be? It could be you, me, and Thrun all together here because I can do duels. We might be here for like four hours. <laughs> that could be a problem. I don't give a shit. I don't care. It, it's whatever because I can do dual interviews now. That's the best part. I have a buddy that will come mean? in. What do you mean? Like, I can have him on that side. Oh, I have okay. a third mic. Oh, you do? Okay. Yep. And But it does take a whole different software. So I have a buddy that's very big into that. And he's like, anytime you need to mm-hmm. do two interviews or, you know, more people, contact me. I'll come and I'll help you. And he's been here multiple times and he's always willing to help. So when, when will this episode come out? Monday. Monday? Yep. Okay. So um, week one predictions. Oh, shoot. Good. That's a great segment. Week one predictions. Well, I don't even know who plays. <laughs> who the Vikings play? <laughs> well, yeah, we'll just, uh, so, um, yeah, look it up. So, Packers play Eagles, and they're both um, presumably in Brazil now. I, I would assume they are. I'm still going to go with Packers on that one. I'm going to say. Because I think the Packers just keep getting better. I'm going to say it's a low-scoring game. Yeah, they're all going to be tired. They're going to yeah. be, like, just jet-lagged out of their minds. Um, I, I assume they're already there, right? But they keep claiming they can't leave the hotel. You know, there, there's other things on their mind. Um, who knows what the grass conditions are going to be? Um, well, at least it's going to be the same for both. I'm going to say still with Packers though. Twenty-three twenty Packers. Okay, I mean the Eagles are a fantastic team, but I still think the Packers just keep getting better. And it's Week One. It's Week One, so yep. everything's kind of up in the air at the moment. Yep. yep. Who do the Vikings play? Tell me uh, that one. Vikings at Giants. Noon Sunday. Oh, God. And the Giants. I'm going to go with my Vikings on that one still. Uh, to me, that's like a 50-50. Even Packers-Eagles. I think they're both two good teams. I think the Giants Sam and Vikings are Darnold like two. Darnold at QB? I, I know. I'm well What's aware. What's the score? <laughs> 13 to 10 Vikings. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go rely on that defense, man. I don't know, but you know, I really think the team to beat still is the Lions in our in our division. Yeah. I don't think the Bears are any yeah. good still. They got rid of Justin Fields and who who's their quarterback now even? I don't even know. For the Lions? No, for the Bears. Um Caleb Williams. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I, I'm assuming he is starting. I haven't followed their stuff. I assume enough. so because they got rid of Justin Fields. So yeah. who else would be left? So I'm gonna go with pick. Packers still winning, Vikings still winning, and that's where I'm going to leave it off at. All right. All right, man. Hey, thanks for coming in. Cheers. It was great to have you. And this has been another episode of Brews and Crews with Aaron Thoreau talking everything from everything under the sun beyond, you know. Uh, what did we talk about? Golf. We talked about travel. We talked about NFL football predictions, for that matter, and um, old fashions, and old fashions, and you're coming back on, and I would really love if you came on with Chris Thrun to come on and just make us old fashions together, and talk about <clears throat> whatever the heck you guys want to talk about. I think it'd be awesome. But this has been another episode of Brews and Cruise. Remember, you can always find me on YouTube to watch it, but any major streaming platform to listen to it, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or any of the above. Tune in every single Monday for a brand new episode of Brews and Cruise. And this has been another edition. Cheers to Aaron. Cheers.